Record is brought to you by Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. Cayman Pharmacy Group, with a location in West Bay and professional pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. Seaboard Marine, with over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling 949-4977 or visit seaboardmarine.com for competitive rates. Rotary Central, for more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. Fidelity Bank, for all your banking needs, visit fidelitygroup.com. Fidelity, we're good for you. And Roper's Janitorial. Complete janitorial service for commercial, industrial, and residential. They get the job done right every time. This is For the Record with Ort Connor. Coming to you live from Radio K9 Studio. For the Record. For the Record. For the Record. Here, Here from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the Record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the Record. For the Record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today is Wednesday, the 8th day of January 2020. 2020. Trust that everyone had an enjoyable night. Nice and cool weather. Uh, those of you who are fortunate to have air conditioning in your homes uh, and unfortunately have to pay those bills when they come in from CUC, uh, you would have should see a little uh, respite in your bills uh, if because you shouldn't really be have to be using your air conditioning that much now. Uh, you should be able to maybe open those windows and let that cool breeze come inside as well. Uh, there were days in the Cayman Islands when you could do that. You could keep your doors open, leave your windows open. Uh, hopefully, there are some areas in the Cayman Islands where you can still do that um, as well. Uh, for those of you who are on the roads of the Cayman Islands, again, we urge you to please, please be extremely cautious. Please ensure that you observe the rules of the road. Please try to control those inner demons, those demons that are within you, pushing you to hit that accelerator, pushing you to drive aggressively pushing you to tailgate the other drivers in front of you, tempting you to use your uh, cell phone while you're driving or trying to put on your makeup or comb your hair while you're driving. All of those inner, de all of those inner uh, demons, try to resist those so that you drive carefully on the roads of the Cayman Islands. Also, that uh, appeal goes out to other road users as well, whether you're a pedestrian whether you're a cyclist um, as well, because always remember that the life you save may be your own. Folks, I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. As you know, for the record is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Orit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 10 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There is always someone there waiting to take your calls. Nine times out of ten, it is who? That beautiful radio voice of Miss Susan Watson. You can call us on our toll-free number provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. You can also call us on 949-8037 and 949-6990. If you don't like to talk on the telephone, then email us at for the record, one word, for the record at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. WhatsApp us on 925-3261. 
where you can leave us a text message or send us a voice note, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube simply by subscribing to Radio Cayman live stream. Today being Wednesday, it is my pleasure to have in the studio with me this morning. And uh, he is always here unless he's off island or unless he has some prior commitment that does not allow him to be on the show always here always on time, none other than MLA, Mr. Ezard Miller, who represents the district of Northside in our legislative assembly. Mr. Miller, good morning. Welcome back to For the Record and a happy 2020 to you and your family and the constituents in your district as well. Morning, Osi. Morning to the listening audience and the, and the wider Cayman. Yeah, it's good to be back and it's nice to start off a new year and we all have all these New Year resolutions and all the good things we're going to do. So I, I'm just, my New Year resolution is to continue what I've been doing in terms of trying to represent the people and trying to lead the country back to participatory democracy, encouraging the people to become more involved in the governance of the country and not to just sit back on, and, and complain on our front porches mm-hmm. and under the grape trees or the coconut trees or in Georgetown under the mango tree or in the Eastbury tree. We're not doing the grape trees down there. <laughs> but the idea is to, to, to promote dialogue with, 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 with the people, to encourage the people to come forward, talk to their representatives. Don't, don't just abandon them and expect them to get everything right. Mm-hmm. You, you, we have a responsibility as a voter to work with your representative, and to see that your representative is working with and for you, and you shouldn't just leave that out there and and do nothing about it until every four years. Uh, we need to put in place mechanisms that allows for greater dialogue and, and, and participation. My grandmother used to tell me two hay is better than one if it even cow you get more meat. <laughs> so, you know, don't don't believe that you know because you're not at a certain academic level or not at a certain social level that you don't have a right or, or you don't have a contribution to be made to me. Mm-hmm. It is it is important that we hear from all sides. Mm-hmm. Now, your district from a demographic standpoint is, is relatively small. Geographically, it's pretty large, yes. And and we we speak about and we recognize the, the affluence of the Cayman Islands. We recognize the successes that the government has had in relation to um, to budgets, mm-hmm. Um, surpluses, staying within uh, guidelines, and and in many instances, exceeding expectations. A district like yours, if we were really, if we really look to solving the problems of the Cayman Islands, your district, because of the demographics, small demographics, what would it take for you? And I'm sure that you know every vulnerable person in your district. Every, you, you basically know what their basic needs are, mm-hmm. whether or not they need a little bit more funding from government, whether or not they need windows uh, fixed, um, whether or not they need a helper, whether or not they need transportation or whatever. What would it take for you as a representative of that district if you had the resources to solve the solvable problems in your district well, for your, for your it, constituents. It, it, it would be a great day. And, and you know, the, the sad part about all of this is that we are so fortunate as a government in Cayman, we have the resources. It's just that, in my view, we are using many of the resources wrong. Northside, again, is a good example. We have the district clinic, totally unused. I mean, we have doctors two half days a week. Tuesdays and Fridays. No other services available. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should have patient education. We should have public health. Um, we need a, uh, we haven't had a, a, what do you call them, development officer, right? What we need is a person to coordinate the social activities. Okay. That's yeah. a, a community development officer, officer right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm promised to this, that's supposed to be recruited now in January for the budget. But again, we, we we have a civic center, totally unused. I sponsor a senior citizen program every Tuesday. I'm hoping to get that expanded this year to at least twice a week uh, because 
the, 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 that's what the senior citizens want. Mm-hmm. They, they want to get together, they, you know, um, and, and be felt made useful. Uh, we have a program with that where the um, primary school comes and have lunch with the senior citizens occasionally, right? And, and it's such a wonderful exchange for the children. They're in awe at the stories that these senior citizens can tell them. The senior citizens feel so good because they have an opportunity to pass something on to people. Um, I'm working with with, with um, Miss um, Evelyn Rocket. Uh, we hope to do some, something similar now by how people from students from Clifton Other High School visit. Mm-hmm. And this came out of the most recent thing that you and I held. Yes, yes, yeah, the, cultural, the, 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 yeah. the cultural day. Mm-hmm. Um, well, see, I am ashamed. I'm embarrassed that we don't do more for our senior citizens in this country who built the country that you and I enjoy. We, we, we force them to be, to, 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 to be embarrassed, right? To come to Georgetown and go to NAU to get something. We know, everybody knows, the government knows that $750 a month, which is going up to in January, like $650 now, is inadequate. If that's not inadequate, why are we going to seven fifteen this January, mm-hmm. and the next year January we go to eight fifty? We have the resources. What what we need to do is we need to use our economics and statistics unit, and determine what is a minimum livable standard for our senior citizens. Mm-hmm. That's what we have to provide. Mm-hmm. If that turns out to be twelve fifteen hundred dollars a month, that's where we start. Okay, if you're getting a little pension. $150, $200 a month, it means we've got to give you $1,300, right? If you have a little apartment, buy a house that you rent, which we should encourage people to do. Mm-hmm. The, the decision by the PPM government to disallow the ability for K-minus to add 10% onto the house without planning approval and planning regulations removed one of the k ability to look after themselves for retirement, you know. Because you can always build on a room in a bathroom and rent that out. So if you got a little place that you're getting three, four hundred dollars a month, it means you gotta give you a thousand dollars a month. Then we gotta get them. But here's what we do. We're giving them six, eight, seven fifty from this month. We know it's inadequate. You you cannot live on six hundred and fifty dollars a month in Cayman when it comes to food, electricity and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it means that they have to come back to us, the politicians to get their electricity paid. They got to come to us for health insurance. They got to come to us for all these things because everything is incremental. And, the, and, and that is political expedience. The politician sets that up to maintain their importance for the people. What we need to do is take the politics out of it. <laughs> it should not matter what a citizen from North say get, whether Ezra applies for it or the person applies for themselves. Or I call somebody to say, you got to do this, right? It should be a strict form. You go there, you tick the boxes, here's your check. And why do we put it, you know, we, we certify people at 80 years old, right, of indigent for health care, right, for three months. Now, 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 what is this 80-year-old going to do in the next, after three months to get back on, 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 on that stuff? Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so we need to have a national discussion yes, on yes. What are we going to provide for our senior citizens? And we have to determine what that is, and then we have to fund it. The other sad part, you know, is that, you know, I have been trying since 2009 to get the government to have a detailed review of revenue on the side of the budget. You know, we spent three weeks down there talking about expenditures. There was no word said about revenue except what I brought up, right? And the sad part about that is that we equate good performance, exceptional performance in the civil service and in the ministries and the politicians by exceeding revenue. So what do we do? We under budget revenue every year because we know, we know we're going to get more. Mm-hmm. So therefore, nobody can look at us and say, well, you're not performing. You, you remember the days of customs every year expedient? Yes, yeah. and All the accolades that they got in every throne speech and everything. So I 
the Auditor General reviewed revenue um, last year, year four last. She pointed out all these areas that we're not addressing. Mm -hmm. When they wouldn't give me the two um, classrooms, classrooms for Northside, right? When I went back to the early the next morning, I, I looked at it. I think there's three pages in the um, planning estimates on revenue projections. I only took the items where 2019 was more than 2018. Given the government prediction for growth, we would expect 2020 to be higher. And I took 10 items and I found $36 million budget expense. Now the sad part about that, right, is that might sound good monetary wise, but what are we depriving our citizens of because we budgeted in badly? Yes. That's the problem. Okay, folks, we have to take a commercial break. Please stay tuned. The conversation with Emily, Mr. Ezard Miller, will continue after this short commercial break. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. In May 1908, under Commissioner Hearst, the Government Savings Bank was established to compensate for the lack of any commercial bank. It was believed that prior to the bank's establishment, a large amount of gold was held privately and buried throughout the island for safekeeping. Initially, depositors in the new bank were offered a 2% interest on their funds, which later increased to 2.5% in 1911. In 1908, the bank had three depositors with total deposits amounting to five pounds. By 1908, this rose to 18 depositors and 90 pounds. But the government savings bank proved to be attractive, and within six years of its inception, in 1914, deposits had grown to 554 pounds. Information from this historical vignette was sourced from Founded Upon the Seas, a history of the Cayman Islands and their people by Michael Creighton and the New History Committee. Radio Cayman's Historical Facts Vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. 2020 means perfect vision. And if you have your sights set on driving a new hybrid, then the time is now to check out the new RAV4 and CHR. Just two of the many hybrid models that VAMP is bringing to Cayman. Whether you're looking for a smoother and quieter way of driving or want a car that maximizes fuel efficiency while minimizing emissions, there are lots of ways a new hybrid from VAMP can make the difference in your life. Hybrids save fuel, run cleaner, reduce CO2 emissions, and even recharge their batteries without being plugged in. So focus your 2020 vision on a new hybrid from Vant Motors, and we will see you through. Come to Vant, home of the hybrid, located on Walker's Road. It was a day that changed my life. No words can describe the feelings of seeing my baby boy sick for the first time. The overwhelming feeling of fear to be responsible for his health and happiness became my priority. So I did what any nurturing mother would do when their baby is sick. I took him to get some of the best medicine possible. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care, so you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. System one loaded. one 800 What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record. This is For the Record with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. My pleasure to have in the studio with me this morning, Emily, Mr. Ezard Miller. Talking about the uh, elderly, talking about the relative uh, affluence in the Cayman Islands, the uh, robust position of uh, government finances uh, in the Cayman Islands, and speaking of the elders in our society, I want to send out a bladed happy birthday to 
Mr. Howell. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Howell. Wow. He turned 105 on Tuesday, yesterday. Mm-hmm. So uh, belated happy birthday to him. And uh, I'm sure that if you talk to him, he will tell you the secrets of <laughs> long life, what he has done. And one of the things I would say in terms of the, uh, you know, that has contributed to his longevity has to do with his demeanor, his attitude, always smiling, always friendly, always yeah. friendly. So, Mr. Howell, enjoy uh, your, I hope you trust, hope and trust that you enjoyed your 105th birthday yesterday um, as well. We've um, been getting back to, to, to your question about sure, why sure. we do the district. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so we need to do something about the senior citizens. Then we need to do something about the youth, and we need to do something about the young people. One of the things that I would like to see um, introduced in my community is a, where we have regular... Uh, we, you and I grew up around a dining room table. That's where you learned your manners. That's where we talked about the family issues and everything else, right? I've said many times one of my disappointments when I go around to people houses starting from 2009, because it wasn't that way in the 80s when I, when I was elected, was the absence of dining room tables, right? I would love to have a program at the Civic Center once a month mm-hmm. where we bring in young parents, right, along with the senior citizens. And you have one or two senior citizens and some young parents at each table. You have the children there, and it's an opportunity for the senior citizens to encourage the, the young parents to help them, right? And, and, and again, to, to teach our children manners. One of the things that I find that, that is missing from our society at large now, right? You know, you and I uh, were raised that anybody three years older than us, you had to put what old people call handle to the knee, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, you yes, know? yes. Nobody, nobody puts handle to anybody, any of the young people anymore. And these are the kind of principles and standards, right, that we need to inculcate. Because it is very difficult, I think, for particularly for single for, for, for single women with children and, and, and deadbeat dads who are not involved in anything, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to, to, to find the time, come in all the way to Georgetown, have a job. By the time they get home in the traffic in the evening, it, it's already 6, 7 o'clock. They, they've got to prepare an evening meal. they got to look after the children. they got to help them with homework, you know. I would love to provide an outlet for them for that, right? Where we can get, and, and we need to find a way to mingle the young adults with the older adults. You, you know, you and I got that from church, right? We, we got that through Sunday school. Mm-hmm. We got it through Christian Endeavor. We got it through other youth programs at the church, Boy Scouts, et cetera, et cetera. I think that there's a, we're developing, I believe, a gap between our, our seniors. The other thing was that when you and I were growing up, beside the village raising us, the extended family did, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because your grandmother wasn't working. So if your mother was at work, you could go home and grandmother was there or she was next door, you know? And she could look after you till your mother come. The problem we have now is that the, the, the mother is 19 years old, right? And the grandmother is 36, is under 40. And still working, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so we, we're missing that 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 social opportunity to interact with with, with, with elderly people, and, and and these are the kind of things that the other thing is that, that you know the way the sports facilities are so poorly maintained in my community, right? I mean, you you drive across the Ronald Forbes Field on a regular basis. We have had fence around that grandstand now for three years, you know, which they rent, right? We could have had granite. Um, grandstands by now but it cost them to rent them right and you can't get nobody doing nothing about it right but we have football from the, from the primary schools practicing it because we combine because of the small two school east end and north side right so they practice in east end one night they practice in north side but the government is doing nothing about it three years the community the district council was going to buy the sign to put on that field, to put Ronald Forbes field on that, right? The education minister and government would not allow us to do it. Oh, no, it has to be up to a certain standard. 
I said, well, you tell me, you, you, you tell me, you design it, we'll pay for it, we want it. Oh no, we're doing it, we're doing it. Three years. And the only sign you see on that fence is the, pro, is the banners that we put up there the day we opened it, the day we changed the name. Now, now speaking of uh, uh, some of these programs that you're talking about for, for the elderly, the, the new committee, commission that we have now that is... Uh, old people. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, elderly person for uh, elderly persons. What, what sort of role can uh, they play but or the, are they playing in, in, in developing some of these ideas that you have? Well, I don't know. <laughs> have you heard anything from them? Right? I, I said when they well, brought they, they, they been they have been on, on this show. Uh, and, 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 and they and, meet, and, yeah. and, and, and I think they may be advising government in certain capacity. Mm-hmm. But when they brought the bill to the LA, I said it wasn't what the paper was written on. Where are the resources? You know, where's the funding for mm-hmm. this? Now, mm-hmm. if we, we set up this, this committee and we said, okay, we're putting $200,000 in the budget or $500,000 in the budget, which you can afford, right? Which you all are going to manage and develop programs for the senior citizens in each community, right? But we, 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 we appointed the, um, I, I don't remember what the real name for it, but it's Older Persons Board or something, right? Yes, uh, I'll, I'll find the exact name. But I just approved that. Uh, a, a two-year budget. I know. I don't. I don't see in a line. I don't. I don't recall seeing a line. I didn't that for older persons committed to function. Um, are they being consulted on 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 changes to the pension legislation, changes to the health care legislation? No, those are the kind of things that they could do. Mm-hmm. But again, they need resources. Yes, yeah. They need staff. You know. But, but it gets back, O.C., to my frustration, and that things are just incremental. Right, we really not want, does not appear to want, to solve a problem or to contribute to these people the way we should. Some of the people that they got on that board are good people, and and they'll work their fingers to the bone to do things, but there's no resources in the budget from to work with. And and you and I both know that the days when you could do things and came out without money long gone. Oh yes, long gone. Question about that. Yep. So it, it, it again. It's, it seems that we're just not, we're just not focused enough, you know. And 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 we don't want to 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 develop a solution that is not controlled by the political forces. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and 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 for the benefit of our um, listening and viewing audience, the um, that uh, council is actually. Um, called uh, uh, Council for uh, Older Persons. Um, uh, Miss Lucille Seymour is the chair. This was announced in uh, October of uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will give you, we will provide more information. And I'm sure if Miss Lucille is listening, she will call in as well to give us an overview of what that uh, council uh, is doing, uh, what their plans are, and po- quite possibly how she can interact with uh, representatives in the various constituencies as well mm-hmm. to identify uh, certain I mean, shortcomings. I, I would love for them to, 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 to come Northside and interact with my senior citizens one Tuesday and, 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 and talk about how, you know, they can call one of the things that we, I mean, we try to do um, programs for, for, for the senior mm-hmm. citizen. We just bring them there to, to, to the little terms, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can show you some artwork that they did the other day um, being guided by a, by an artist. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you you say that it's, you know. But Mr. Miller, uh, if I may interrupt you, because mm-hmm. we, we almost go to, each district has representation on, on that uh, council. So Northside does have. Uh, oh, yeah, I know that. Uh, Mr. Patricia but, Ebanks. Yeah. But again, my my concern of when we passed the older person's law, mm-hmm. right? First of all, I, I didn't agree. I don't agree with the nomenclature, right? I, I think there are much more appropriate titles we could give people than simply call them older persons. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. at what point do you become old these days? You know, mm-hmm. when you and I grew up, father was old, right? When I was eighteen, father was old. Now that I'm be sixty eight this year, neither does look too old, <laughs> to me, right? <laughs> Nine is the new forty. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what was missing from that legislation was, what are the outcomes expected from this committee to do? Mm-hmm. 
for instance, we just increasing we're increasing the allowance for poor for poor persons, right? But of course, you know the poor person legislation that we were promised five years ago, not here yet, right? Were these people consulted? Right? Were they consulted? Have they agreed that in spite of the cost of living in Cayman, the the the, the, the older persons are properly being serviced but but by going from seven hundred and fifty okay. this year to eight fifty next year, you know? Okay. I, I suspect that they wouldn't be. Okay, we reached the top of the hour, 8 o'clock news. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back with Emily, Mr. Ezard Miller, right after the 8 o'clock news. Thank you, Mr. Connor. And the studio time down by Foster's is 8 a.m. How about this for a New Year's resolution? Live to eat. Yep, live to eat. Don't just eat to live. Find the balance between going crazy for that indulgently creamy made-from-scratch cake and knowing just how many nuts will make for a good, naturally healthy snack in between meals. Slow down and take in all of the joys of food in your life this year and live to eat with Foster's. Follow along for tips and more this year as we live to eat in 2020. Your voice, your choice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. In a special lecture given by Laura Pineda, students at the Truman Bond Law School got to grips with the causes and consequences of Brexit. Brexit is a word used to describe Britain's exit from the European Union, a unique political and economic international organization. In a referendum held in June 2016, the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union by 52 percent compared to the 48 percent that voted to remain. The two-year notice period was extended to January 31st, 2020. Panetis' lecture raised concerns about the uncertain impact Brexit will have on Cayman. She anticipated a, quote, generally negative effect on Cayman because of changing rules regarding financial aid, access to the EU's financial markets, and international trade. The special Brexit lecture welcomed all TBLS students studying any of the three degrees the law school offers, including undergraduate, professional practice course, and the international finance postgraduate degree. Students took part in engaging activities recreating the 2016 referendum debate and discussing the results of the December 12th general election. A local pool and spa business receives a prestigious industry design award from the Pool and Hot Tub Alliance. More from Radio Cayman's Shanda Gallego. Firms across the United States and around the world submit hundreds of entries to the competition each year. The PHTA International Awards of Excellence program then recognizes the most beautiful and creative installations of pools, spas, hot tubs and water features. It was Pool Patrol once again grabbing a national award of excellence for another project in Grand Cayman. And according to officials, the installation exemplifies creativity and quality workmanship in the traditional pool category. Shanda Gallego, Radio Cayman News. An animal house invites you and your furry friends to the Happy Dogs Festival. It's a celebration for the dog in your life. And as Animal House Floor Supervisor Christine Gillot says, it's the perfect opportunity to exhibit their natural talents. This is our fourth year now. And basically it's a day where people can show off their dogs, show off the tricks and the basically the coat of the dog, the general overall health of the dog. They can also speak to our vendors. Uh, finding more out about foods and stuff. There's prizes as well, which is great. Doing raffle tickets, so there's some good, really good prizes on there. And yeah, all the proceeds from that go direct to the Humane Society. They do a great job and they need all the help they can get. Yeah, it's a good way to cause. Even if you're not participating, she encourages the public to show up and show their support. The festival is at 10 a.m. on January 18th at Animal House. In regional news, motorists who have been observed and caught by police in Antigua using a cell phone while driving will have to pay a fine of 500 local dollars immediately, according to the Ministry of Legal Affairs. In a statement, it said that the amendment to the Vehicles and Road Traffic Amendment Act 2018 has gone into effect, making it an offense of careless drivers holding and using a handheld mobile device. It says the legislation makes it an offense for individuals to view, send, or compose an electronic message, and that Antiguan police are permitted to issue a ticket with a fixed penalty of $500. Quote, if you're observed holding or using a mobile device while driving. Now with the check of international news, here's the BBC, which will take us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. BBC News with David Austin. 
Donald Trump has sought to downplay the significance of Iran's ballistic missile attack on two U.S. bases in neighboring Iraq. He's tweeted that all was well and that the damage was being assessed. There have been no reports of casualties. Iran said the attack was in response to last week's killing by the U.S. of the Iranian military commander, General Qasem Soleimani. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, in a televised broadcast, said that Iran's retaliation was a slap in the face for the Americans. But he said it was more important to end U.S. presence in the region. Iraq's prime minister said the Iranians had told him that the Americans were the target rather than Iraqi interests. Several international airlines have suspended flights over Iranian and Iraqi airspace. In the meantime, the Iranian authorities have said there are no survivors among the 176 people who were on board a Ukrainian passenger plane that crashed soon after taking off from Tehran airport. Many of the victims were Iranian, but there were also more than 60 Canadians on board. The BBC's transport correspondent says publicly available flight data show the plane climbed to 8,000 feet following a normal takeoff when its data stream suddenly disappears, indicating some type of catastrophic event on board. That's the latest BBC News. I'll stay in touch with Radio Cayman for the latest in news and information. Follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download the Radio Cayman app or log on to our website, www.radiocayman.gov.ky. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice, your radio. The Weather Report is proudly sponsored by Super Stitch Sewing and Fabric Center, your one-stop household store at 39 Pasador Place, Smith Road. Still offering the best prices in town. Call 949-2833 or go to superstitch.com.ky. New stock has just arrived at Super Stitch. Now don't take my word for it. Drop by and see for yourself. Fresh off the boat, we have loads of fabric, vinyl upholstery fabric, fabric for cushions, outdoor fabrics, and dress fabric. That's not all. Super Stitch has sewing accessories and craft items. Included in the new shipment, you will find sheets, comforters, throw pillows, bath mats, rugs, and curtains for every room in your home. Super Stitch, 39 Pasador Place, Smith Road. Still offering the best price in town. Call 94. 949-2833 or go to superstitch.com.ky That's a good morning. Let's take a look at the latest weather report. Current temperature is 79 degrees. Relative humidity is 73%. Barometric pressure 30.12 inches and rising. The wind is east-northeast at 19 knots. Overnight low temperature was 76. Synopsis indicate strong northeasterly winds and rough seas are expected for the next 24 hours as a high-pressure system moves over the southeast United States. Radar images show showers in and around the Cayman area moving southeast. Now the forecast for today and tonight calling for partly cloudy skies, becoming cloudy at times with a 20% chance of showers for today and a 30% chance of showers for tonight. Temperatures will be in the low 80s today and fall to the mid-70s tonight. Your winds will be northeast at 20 to 25 knots. Seas will be rough with wave heights of 5 to 7 feet with swells along the east coast. Small craft warning remains in effect for today and tonight as well. Today's high tide will occur this morning at 847, low tide this afternoon at 249, and a high tide again tonight at 736. The sun will set this evening at 2 minutes past 6 and will rise tomorrow morning at 2 minutes after 7. And the outlook is calling for similar weather conditions through Friday morning. Superstitch Sewing and Fabric Center was a proud sponsor of The Weather Report. Your one-stop shop for all of your household items, craft items, jewelry, beads, and decorations, and much more. Call Superstitch at 949-2833 or email customer care at superstitch.com.ky. New, New stock, stock has just, just arrived, arrived at, at Super Stitch. Stitch. Now don't take my word for it. Drop by and see for yourself. Fresh off the boat, we have we loads have of fabric, fabric vinyl, vinyl upholstery, upholstery fabric, fabric, fabric for cushions, outdoor fabrics, and dress fabric. That's not all. Super Stitch has sewing accessories and craft items. Included in the new shipment, you will find sheets, comforters, throw pillows, bath mats, rugs, and curtains for every room in your home. Super Stitch, 39 Pasador Place, Smith Road. Still, Still offering, offering the best, the price, best in price in town. town. Call 9 949- 949-2833 or go to superstitch.com.ky.
Can you imagine where Cayman runs off renewable energy? We can. Learn how you can join government and be an energy advocate. Visit the Ministry of Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure's Facebook page to learn more. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Planning a meeting, event, or office celebration? Visit subway.ky to place your catering order today. And top of the morning once again, let's take a look at traffic. Traffic is busy, heavy traffic on the Linford Pearson Highway and busy traffic coming off the Linford Pearson Highway on Agnes Way. And on Cool Road, some sections steady, other sections busy. And steady traffic coming off of Bobby Thompson Way. Looking towards the West Bay area, West Bay four-way stop, traffic is flowing pretty good. On the West Bay Road, moderate flow of traffic in both directions, especially in the vicinity of the Ritz-Carlton. And in and out of Georgetown on Shedden Road, things looking pretty good as traffic flowing moderately and a moderate flow of traffic on Godfrey Nixon Way and Easton Avenue. And traffic is moderate as well on Edward Street. Light traffic on Owen Roberts Drive. If you've seen accidents or incidents on Cayman's Roads, give us a call here at Radio Cayman, 949-6990. Have a good morning and buckle up. Do you ever have those days when you have to get a super early start or you're out late and want something fresh and healthy to eat? Subway has now opened their fourth 24-hour location for you early birds and night owls. Subway at West Shore Center on 7 Mile is now open 24 hours. So now you can grab any of Subway's fresh menu items any time of the day at four convenient locations. West Shore Center 7 Mile, Countryside in Savannah, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers West Bay. Subway, eat fresh. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Planning a meeting, event, or office celebration? Visit subway.ky to place your catering order today. Each weekday, Monday through Friday, Miracle Brokers is the proud sponsor of Radio Cayman's Bulletin Board. For all your moving needs, call the professionals of Miracle Brokers, 949-5989 or 916-0355. For a free estimate, they take the hassle out of moving. Miracle Brokers. Now located at 140 Kingbird Drive in the North Sound. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me, MLA Mr. Ezard Miller. We started discussing the successes of the government from a financial standpoint and the concerns in each. Uh, district, in particular uh, Mr. Miller's district, and uh, if he had uh, the resources uh, or what would he want to do, the things that he would want to see uh, done in this district. Uh, we're talking about the, one of the topics came up about concerns about the elderly and uh, programs for the elderly as well, and we did um, speak about the Older Persons Council that was created in 2017. And for the benefit of our audience, I just want to point out that in 2017 also that the uh, Older Persons Council embarked on a series of district meetings to seek input from older persons and their families uh, that took place in from mid-April through mid-May. I think that was of uh, 2017, and they, they, were, they were held in uh, each district. So no, 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 no. Huh? In that instance, the North Side, I had to go East End. I had oh, to carry okay. on myself. They would now I'm not meeting North Side. Uh, Yep, yep, East End and Gun Bay, that was on a Saturday, yeah, and it was combined, it was combined, yeah. I remember, as a matter of fact, you, you commented uh, uh, about that as well. But, but the, the mere fact that they did, uh, you know, have these uh, mm -hmm. meetings as well, yeah. So I just no, I mean, I, I don't want, I don't want to, to yeah. I don't want to, 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 I'm not being critical of the old people. Precisely, yeah. yeah. And I, I, didn't I, want I to think that they, that, I think that, that they have set out to, to, to try and find some solution. Mm -hmm. My problem is that there's no resources mm -hmm. for them to utilize, even even to develop solutions. Yes. You know? They, they need access to, to, to expertise. I mean, they, they should be in every district um, 
on a monthly basis, once a month. I mean, it's, you know, six districts. It, well, seven if you include eight, if you include Camp Ragnall came on, and they divide them into two up there, right? Yes. And we're talking here about geographical districts, not electoral districts, mm-hmm. right? And that was in 2018, actually, that those yeah, things yeah. took place. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah. But again, they they, they, they they continue this, you know? Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, there was a time when the there was a very active group in East End, which was um, um, kind of organized by... Miss Yvonne, Aunt Yvonne Miller, and, and, and Miss Carmen, and, and, and those friends, right? Uh, and we used to have regular joining of East End and North Side, and then we had the, the, the one in Bordentown was called Young at Heart, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And we used to get together, you know? But we don't want to have senior citizens or see one month of the year, you know? We, you know, it, it's nice to offer them celebrations for that one month, but then you can't forget about them for the other 11 months of the year. Mm-hmm. They need these kind of interactions and celebrations all year round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, in, in in one of your comments, you you, you spoke about the, the the government, the government's uh, budget, uh, the government's achievements, and and you mentioned something, and I'd, I'd like to expand on that in terms of measuring the success of a government's financial position, not by how much you take in what you do with what you take in in terms of how much does it benefit the community, the, um, the country as a whole, but in particular those mm-hmm. who need that extra help. The vulnerable hand. people. Yeah. Yes. You, you see, one of the things that, that is I, where we need to, success, right. uh, to measure and a success. One of the things that I've always maintained is a problem with the PMFL law. You know, right? Uh, we've had that review three, four times, but it's never had a comprehensive review, right? Each government has changed the sections, whether to do with budgeting or reporting. We need to change outputs, right, to outcomes. Outcomes, Mm -hmm. You and I know what an outcome is, right? If I give you $10,000 to go build me a dog shed, the outcome is I must have a dog shed to my satisfaction when I'm Uh done, right? If I give you $10,000 and the output is a dog shed, right, and there's no uh, measurements or criteria attached to it. I might get a dog shade at the end, or I might not, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And my bigger concern, and, and, and I mean, I, I give credit where credit is due. It, it cannot be argued successfully that the progressives on the finance minister, Mark Archer, and the disunited thing that they have now on the... Um, Honorable Mike Tiger, have done a good job in in controlling government finances, right? Um, you can add to that the fact that in 2009, when I took over Public Accounts Committee, government had not produced any accounts for five years, remember? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This year, on 2018, out of 42 entities, we are expecting 40 or 41 to get clean accounts approved by the Auditor General. Now, the, the civil service has to be congratulated on that. The mm-hmm. civil service has to be admired for that. Because you, I'm sure you recall the days when I brought them all down there and threatened to put them all in jail, the chief officer and the, chief, and, and, and the CFO and everything else. Mm-hmm. But they stepped up and, and they've done it. What we need to do now is to, is to give them the ability to better measure what was the outcome and not the output, right? Because if the output is to spend under the budget, now the output is to spend money, you know, right? Then the Auditor General accepts come behind a year or two later in determining whether we got value for money, right? You know, long, long time ago when you, you and I was in school, the, we used to call these things, they were the different phraseology, we used to have program budgeting, remember? And there was a time in Cayman when the government used program budgeting, although it was a cash accounting system and not an accrual system, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if we had a project to do in government, right, and there was a there was a cost for that project and that program, and if it was going to be multi-year, the, the allocations were made annually, right? So we and and the the bigger concern I have with the way the the, the, the government is doing the money is it's okay to have surplus 
and, and, and I support a, a certain level of, of surplus. I, mm-hmm. I do not support um, deficit financing. Yes. You but, have to have money for a rainy day. Right. But having said that, when you get, I think in 2018, the government warming up with some $90 million more revenue than budgeted, right? The growth was not beyond what was forecast for economic growth, right? In 2019, I think it was over 100 million, if my memory serves me correctly. Excess revenue was budgeted for, right? Now that's too much. That's bad budgeting. Because we have deprived the people of this country of services that they need because we didn't budget the income to justify the expenditure, right? And, and the government should not be in the business of making money. This is not a this is not a for profit organization. This is a service organization to deliver services for the people. If if, if we are exceeding our expenditure on an annual basis by ninety to hundred million, right? It's one of two things: we're either de- de- depriving our citizens of services that they need, or we're charging too much taxes. Right, mm-hmm. because you should not be in the business of making that kind of profit on the backs of taxes to the people. Mm-hmm. So the government needs to do one or the other. They need to say, okay, we've delivered all the services that the country needs. You and I know that that's not so. Right? I need two classrooms on our side. Right? Or, and therefore, we have exceeded our revenue by the summer, so we can cut back taxes and reduce the cost of living. Or the government has to say, well, we need to improve and monitor our revenue better so we can provide additional services to our people, which is the way I think it should go. Because reducing government taxes without regulatorializing some kind of regulatory control over the private sector, which I do not support, price controls and all that kind of stuff, (laughs) is not going to affect the people in terms of lowering the cost of living. You know? I mean, I can tell you from the 80s when Mr. Norman Borden took the duty off of water, right? I made it my business to go around to the supermarkets and write down the price of water, right? And the price of water went up when he took the budget yeah. off, okay? When he took the duty yes, off, yeah. the 20% duty off. Happens. So, the, the, you know, we have no way of guaranteeing or enforcing that those kind of reliefs are passed on to the consumer. So I think we need to do a better job of budgeting our our, our revenue. And we can't you can't tell me that you're projecting three, four, five percent growth in twenty twenty and twenty twenty one, right? But well, let me give a better example. It is expected that work permits are going to go up by ten thousand this year. Mm-hmm. That that should indicate more revenue. Yes. The figure for the budget for revenue for work permits is less in twenty twenty than it was twenty nineteen. Wow. That, that's impossible. Mm-hmm. Right? Because we should be going the other way. Yes. yes. In order to reduce the interests of people and, and, and continue to bring it in cheap labor. We need to increase work permit fees and get more revenue to service our people with, right? So it, it, it doesn't make any sense. But the government consistently refuses to engage in a public discussion of its revenue, right? And again, we we need to get to, to you know we need to move this country to more data driven analysis, right? Mm-hmm. You and I know you. You prepared budgets in government. I prepared them. The standard thing is, oh, well, we, we put this figure in last. Let's, let's increase this by 10%. Yeah, I think we can put that up by 10%. Yeah, I can't even put There is no serious mm-hmm. data collection and data analysis and projections. Real. We need to do all of that. Mm-hmm. Then, But yet we have brought people from the U.K., uh, budget and management offices, oh. and this, that, and the other, and, and we really have, haven't gotten to the level that we need to be at, like you no. said, in terms of projections and uh, being... Um, right. uh, then when we have been, the revenue is, and, and we, we should be able to be more accurate than $100 million off, right? 
Listen, they were $10 million, $15 million off. You could say, well, that's fluctuation in the economy, not $100 million. Then we would be better and have more confidence in committing to greater expenditure mm-hmm. for, pe- for things for the most vulnerable in society. And, and those are the people we have to look after. It, I, mean, I think the, the government is finally coming around to what I've been saying from 19, long, long time ago, that we're going to have to go to single-payer health insurance. We don't have to go to single provider. <laughs> but we have to go to a single-payer where we have one insurance, one national health insurance that everybody pays it's into, it. right? And us young people go have to pay a little bit more, right? So we can, so the senior citizens can pay a little bit less. Yes. Uh-huh. That's the purpose of health insurance, mm-hmm. is spreading the risk and making mm-hmm. it more equal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you and all, all of us have the ambition, and as young as we are now, to be old, mm-hmm. right? So you're only, doing, you're only paying it forward. That's all you're doing. And we don't have to call it Obamacare. We can call it Cayman Care. Exactly. <laughs> you can call it Arlene Care if you want, right? I don't mind. You know, and... We have to get to a situation where the, the, the private sector is accepting more responsibility for the care of our elderly mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and providing for people who work for them. We owe that to them. We, we, Absolutely. We owe that to them. Yeah. And I'm not saying that just because I'm going to get old. Well, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm beginning to tell, I'll tell you right now, I have a vested interest in this. Right? At this point in time in my life, I have a vested interest, you know? <laughs> But, but, I mean, this is nothing new for me, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I wrote and put in place a proper health insurance law in 1992, you know. Mm-hmm. Now I'll be here now. A couple of other things I want to talk about. And pensions right as well. And I, and I know that when, when you were minister, you had uh, responsibilities for some of these as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, two things. Well, first of all, I want, I, I want to mention uh, Mr. Rupert McCoy's funeral yesterday. Well attended, uh, mm-hmm. well represented. I, I was talking to one of my um, old uh, colleagues, uh, you know, in government. And while the elections office closed yesterday as a result of the funeral, because of Mr. Rupert's wide reach within the government and in his obituary, they, 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 they spoke about him working at the post office, working at the dispensary, working at lands and survey, working in a training unit, working in the elections office, the government should have closed half day you know, for, 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 person, for persons like, like, like Rupert and other civil servants, you know, when they pass on in res- recognition and in respect of them, at least a half day, the government should have been closed for Especially Rupert at least, McCoy at least the, yesterday the, 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 because he did so much. He, he put in. so much. He yeah. put so much into but, but it. But someone asked me that if he used to work at the dispensary, and I said, no, I think he was involved in the administration at the hospital. I thought he mm-hmm. was. I thought he had taken over from. He was involved with Noel Johnson, and because remember, mm-hmm. Lem was up there mm-hmm. one time too, mm-hmm. right? No, this this was in the early years that, yeah. that he worked. Um, he you know worked in the dispensary up there and. In, in many instances, when he went into those organizations, he improved the mm-hmm. efficiency of the o- operation by putting systems in place. I mean, when it came to the land registry, for instance, uh, those some of those block and parcel numbers, he knew them, you know, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, offhand. He he knew what you know what people's uh, property well, you know, numbers were and stuff like that. But but at the cemetery yesterday. And I go there all the time to visit family members, mm-hmm. um, graves. And I'm looking and I'm seeing all of these vaults, but I'm seeing less and less space. Mm-hmm. And again, talking to my, 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 my former colleague, he pointed out that previously they had attempted to build graves in such a way that you could go up rather than going down and they tried it in Borden Town and there was a huge outcry and uh, and it was scrapped. So we spoke about that. We spoke about the fact that we do not have a national cemetery so that if you have government dignitaries, we don't have a military. But let's say, for instance, a police officer died and you wanted to have some place, you know, for a police officer. We're now establishing, you know, um, a regiment. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you could have and them for sure. We, we have, we have, have, should, should we have none of those area. as well. The districts, all of the district cemeteries are running, mm-hmm. you know, out of space. Now, he pointed out that in the past, people, when, when they tried to introduce it because they had identified a property in East End where once you knocked off the cap off the rocks, there was nothing but sand mm-hmm. underneath. Uh, there and would be ideal place for a cemetery. But people in each district say, no, I want my family to be buried in my district. I don't want to have to go all the way mm-hmm. to, you know, to, uh, to um, a national cemetery or, or whatever. So w- want to talk a little bit about that when we return. want to talk about the garbage situation as well and the garbage trucks. And I'll share um, the situation that has recently occurred in Barbados in relation to 10 garbage trucks that they ordered and hope and trust that the same thing doesn't happen to us here in the Cayman Islands when we do get our garbage trucks as well. So folks, please stay tuned for the record with MLA, Mr. Ezard Miller. We'll be back shortly. It was a day that changed my life. No words can describe the feelings of seeing my baby boy sick for the first time. The overwhelming feeling of fear to be responsible for his health and happiness became my priority. So I did what any nurturing mother would do when their baby is sick. I took him to get some of the best medicine possible. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care. So you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. I have various items coming from different suppliers that I need to ship to Cayman. Do you offer consolidation? Yes. Seaboard Marine offers consolidation for full and less than container loads. We can hold your packages at our Miami warehouse until everything arrives and ship it all in one go. And we have the best rates to Grand Cayman. Visit SeaboardMarine.com for more information. Shipping shore to shore, 2020 means perfect vision. And if you have your sights set on driving a new hybrid, then the time is now to check out the new RAV4 and CHR. Just two of the many hybrid models that Vamped is bringing to Cayman. Whether you're looking for a smoother and quieter way of driving or want a car that maximizes fuel efficiency while minimizing emissions, there are lots of ways a new hybrid from Vamped can make the difference in your life. Hybrids save fuel, run cleaner, reduce CO2 emissions, and even recharge their batteries without being plugged in. So focus your 2020 vision on a new hybrid from Vamped Motors, and we will see you through. Come to Vamped, home of the hybrid, located on Walker's Road. System 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the Record. This is For the Record with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me, MLA, Mr. Ezard Miller. Before we went to the break, I told you two of the areas that we wanted to discuss, the uh, cemeteries, what do we uh, do about those, um, uh, as well as we're going to talk about the garbage situation. But, I mean, you know, one of the things that we need is a national cemetery plan. Mm -hmm. We, We need a plan. And most of the districts, I agree, are going to want to continue to, to do that. One of the problems we have in, in Northside is that Northside is, even though they've lived Georgetown for the last 50 years, when they did, they won't be buried in Northside. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we do our best to, to, to facilitate yeah. it. And, and right now, when it comes to cemetery space, we are not the worst district, huh? Because in the 80s, I bought an extension for what we call a big cemetery down by the Primonis Church. Mm-hmm. So, and that's controlled by the public. Because... All the cemeteries on our side before that were controlled by families that were private. We still have uh, two Chisholm cemeteries that are private. Okay? Um, and we have quite a bit of space there. The problem is that the government has gone up there and built these walls that nobody will use, mm-hmm. right? Because you're going to be able to smell the body because they're six inches on the ground when it should be six feet. I think they, you know, the, the contractor that they hire, right? <laughs> They must have put two ticks instead of one. You know, you put the one foot sign in the hand sign. He thought it was six inches. But the government accepted and paid it. Old Man Bay, um, 
I had bought piece onto that, and then Miss Aiden had bought another piece. So there's, there's quite a bit of space in Little Man Me. Okay. The, the problem is that we, the families want to continue to be buried in proximity to their door. Mm-hmm. And, and we, we accommodate that as much as we we, we, we find. But we need to have a, a national cemetery plan. And I believe that when Mr. McLean, the Honorable Lord McLean, was um, minister, he had changed the regulations to allow stacking uh-huh. in, in, in a vault. Um, but again, I think I think in the implementation of that, they ran into some 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 disagreements with, with yeah. the people. Because I think it was first introduced in the, at the Borden Town Cemetery right. because and that and was the if one you're that going was to, if you're going uh, to, facing the challenge in, right. in terms of space. If you're going to do that, um, we need to, to, to set, there has to be a big PR program with that, eh? Do you think we'll need a referendum on that? Well, it might be. <laughs> but, but about, you know, you, 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 you just can't do that in, in isolation, you know, mm-hmm. because people have to be convinced that, you know, how are you going to seal the first one, right, and whether it's going to be a, a you know, a, a buffer mm-hmm. of sand or, or a material beyond, above a concrete seal or whatever. Uh, I mean, they do it all over the world. Yes, so the yes. technology is going to do it. Don't misunderstand wheel, yes. me. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also need to, like I said, you, you're right in that one of the things that we were given consideration of when, when I was there with, with, with Mr. Walling Whitaker was exactly the creation of a national cemetery, right? And one of the places that we were looking at um, as an interim measure was the old Butts Quarry. Okay. Because we wouldn't have to dig the holes. <laughs> the holes are already there. The other alt- and the other place that would that come really to mind is the modern quarry on 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 Peter St. James, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because again, you could go in there and build walls at at the, at the deputies, right? Uh, and then filling around them, you know. But we should have uh, a, a national cemetery and and all those people, for instance, who um, for whom we have national funerals for, should should be buried in a, in, in a particular mm-hmm. section of it, so mm-hmm. that. At all times, is a, is a, the historical context of it is important too. Um, but it doesn't seem. I mean, I I know that the government has been working now for quite a number of years. Uh, West Bay seems to be in in, in particular difficulty um, on a new cemetery for West Bay, and, and I think they're finally getting an area now. Um, but Georgetown, Savannah um, area, I mean, prospect. There was a large section of that that was designated as a disaster area in, in case we had something like a, like a unfortunately like a plane crash or something or, or some other disaster where we had you know hundreds of people mm-hmm, and we mm-hmm, had to mm-hmm. we had to bury them in a, in a, in a short space of time um, but I don't know that I don't know of any efforts that are being made in, in, in the government to look at that kind of the planning and the garbage situation is getting worse not better uh, I mean, over the, this is this is two Christmases in a row that most people had garbage around their house for Christmas and New Year. Um, in, 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 like I said, again, getting back to our the affluence, the, the the resources that we have as a country, you, you can't justify that the government can't collect garbage. <laughs> you know, I mean, we used to do that properly when we never had no resources. When we had Tump in and and, and Boris. Mm-hmm. Two on a garbage truck. Mm-hmm. You know, they did their job. You, they got the garbage picked up. Yeah. Right? It, it was substantially, substantially, substantially less than what it is today. But um, we, we just don't seem to. But, but it was brought out in the Finance Committee. Again, this incremental development. You don't buy 10 or 11 new garbage trucks, and you don't have provision for people to, to operate them. You know, each one of those new garbage trucks should have provision in the budget for six to eight people to run two shifts, right? And I mean, again, this is not rocket science, you know, right? You should be able to calculate this, right? And the other thing we, we, we need to do is we need to show those people more respect. Now, there are several people in the community you know, who will give them drinks and all that kind of stuff for, for bringing a short appreciation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the government itself, when Mr. Walling Whitaker was there, right, one of my one of the most important and enjoyable things for me to do every Christmas was to go to, to the environmental health Christmas party where he honored the people who picked up garbage and drove the garbage trucks and all that sorts of stuff. And it was always um, interesting 
and, and, and it was it was it was emotionally pleasing to see the reaction of, of, of those people and the appreciation that they showed because he went that extra mile to show them appreciation. Mm -hmm. None of that happens anymore. And I was talking to someone uh, just a few days ago uh, about that, and uh, they they were talking about the hires that uh, Wally put in place when he was there, and the people that he hired, some that had past criminal convictions and things of that nature, and it was predicted that they wouldn't last a couple of weeks. Some of them have been there 20, 25, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, uh, 20, 25 years now that I they mean, have been with environmental health, and, and they have proven, you know. Uh, the, my suggestion their, 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 to, the, their, their to, the to the deputy governor, when they had whatever they had with, 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 with um, the, the former director, was to go and, 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 and ask Mr. Whitaker and Mr. Wally Whitaker to come back and sort this mess out. Because he can do it. He did it in the past, right? And he has, he, he, he Wally has, a, has a, a unique kind of personality when it comes with dealing with those mm -hmm. kind of people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And he just has that ability to manage them properly, get the best out of them, make them feel appreciated, and get the job done. I mean, he, he, he don't he not he no walk away. You know, he, right? grew, he grew up in Central Georgetown, so you know knows those people. There. Well, and, and he would have been he, he could he could solve the problems up there for them in in in, in Charles Pierce. Well, we we they, we hope that. But again, you got to do what you you, you got to give them the resources. I yeah. mean, you you got to we can't put the new director there now. Buy him ten new garbage trucks with no staff to operate them. Mm -hmm. And the case of Barbados is they ordered ten new garbage trucks. Came to find out that when they received the trucks, I don't know what advance planning was done when the orders were made, whether or not anyone went and inspected the truck to see what type of truck they were actually buying. Mm -hmm. But the cab couldn't hold three persons, mm -hmm. and they had to retrofit the trucks uh, with a third seat. In addition to that, the steps that would usually be at the back uh, on the side um, at, well, on uh, each at side. the back were uh, on each <coughs> side, uh, so they had to retrofit all of that. So Barbados, the government was bragging about these vehicles, <laughs> uh, you know, arriving, and they were, you know, as soon as they came off the dock, that they were going to be in operation. Unfortunately, they they weren't. So not the just same. a just a message to, uh, and this is uh, not our first rodeo in terms of uh, purchasing. Garbage but, trucks. Let's make sure that yeah. they're fit for purpose. I love Port Authority. They went and bought these trucks that got big signs on them saying not to be driven on the road. Public roads are not road worthy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but okay. we'd like to put them on the road. Anyway. So um, have we gotten an explanation now in, in terms of the, the, the garbage pickup, where we're at with it? Uh, I noticed, for instance, well, throughout all of the districts, no, people have reached the point now where you're not hearing as many complaints about complaints. it. Yeah. The that's all, the, but the, the visibility, the service, yeah, the visibility is there. I was appalled on Sunday, and I sent you photo, yeah, yeah, photos yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. It's embarrassing. Uh, you know, at, um, at Starfish Point, what uh, the sign says, the Ivory Key or something, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, Starfish Point, point where, yeah. you, where you just had those public facilities uh, built there, and the garbage was piled up there. That's a public beach. That's where... Your tourists from Moritz Tortuga Club, all of those all persons of who are, are in the, those <laughs> rental homes there are going to that public beach, and it is, you know, un unsightly. Now, mm -hmm. you know, we do realize <laughs> that there are challenges in, 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 in respect to this, but we are where we are, and we got there somehow. No, yeah, we, got, we got there by, 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 by bad, simple bad management mm -hmm. of the resources that we have. If we want to get committed people, and, 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 and collecting garbage is a tough job. It's a tough yeah. job. It's a nasty job. The people need to be making fifteen, twenty dollars an hour. Come on, man. Right? Plus, they need to work odd hours because, as, as I said in finance committee, we can no longer collect garbage in Cayman in an eight-hour day. Right? Yeah. And, yes. and most of them, you know, what they're doing, they go at 2 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock, they're going back home. Mm -hmm. We have to have these new garbage trucks on the road a minimum of 16 hours a day. Right? So that means double crew. Right? And then the other eight hours, you have a special crew then that comes in that does all the maintenance on these trucks. If a, if a, 
if a hydraulic line is leaking, it needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't leave it until it destroys everything. You know, it, the, the, the trucks need to be cleaned on a daily basis, right? You know, but you have to have a separate crew doing that. I mean, Mr. Whitaker used to make his drivers, you know, and the crew for this truck had to take a hard look after the truck, right? When they came in, they cleaned the truck, prepared it for the next day. Next. So when they come the next morning, you know, it had gas fuel in it. It had all, all the engine oils were correct, all the hydraulic levels were... None of that is being done, right? And it is obvious that what we need in the picking up the garbage is people. Because every time they get overwhelmed with it, you hear that they've hired 10 people on, a, on an interim basis. You know, they, they're going, they need right now, in my estimation, if they're going to, because I understand that in the final count when it comes now, is they're expected to be somewhere around 20 to 21 trucks that are operational there. Okay. The different kinds of trucks, mm-hmm. the different container types, yes, trucks, yes. the front end uh-huh. loaders, the uh-huh. back loaders, uh-huh. everything, else, uh-huh. right? So if we gonna have twenty people, right? We need a hundred people. We we, we gonna need one hundred and fifty people working down there. Eh? If we're going to work two shifts a, a, a day, plus the extra ones to, to to do all the maintenance and the cleaning, all this kind of stuff, and we need to provide a proper facility down. I haven't seen the plans. I don't know what the, 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 the new waste management thing is. You know, I, you know. Well, that's what I was going to say after this commercial break. Right, we want to talk about the whole <laughs> issue of waste management you and, see, you, you know, what what, the LA, what the approach the difference is going to be and has to be, you yeah, know, yeah. in terms of it, because it it is really uh, getting to a crisis stage at this point in time mm. as well. Folks, please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. It was a day that changed my life. No words can describe the feelings of seeing my baby boy sick for the first time. The overwhelming feeling of fear to be responsible for his health and happiness became my priority. So I did what any nurturing mother would do when their baby is sick. I took him to get some of the best medicine possible. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy understands the importance of careful decisions you make every day for your family. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care, so you can feel confident in knowing that your family is safe with the right medication. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we take care of your health. Praise time. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Weekdays, 6 to 6.30 a.m. Early this morning, I woke from my sleep. Radio K-Man, waking you up with Praise Time. Praise time. I know, I know we care. He'll always be there. Oh, 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 yeah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise, praise time. Him. Set your clock for 6 a.m. or you will miss it. For the record with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We're having a discussion with MLA, Mr. Ezzard Miller. The discussion now is really now focused on the waste disposal in the Cayman Islands uh, as well. We're going to go on now to waste management in uh, the Cayman Islands, one of the challenges that we still have and one that has to be addressed because of not only the economic concerns as far as their tourism is concerned, but even more importantly, the um, uh, um, environmental and uh, ecological concerns that we have as well. Well, I I don't know. I would love to see to somebody, but it was obviously couldn't be done in in, in finance committee. I, both me and and, and Mr. Don Rebel, uh, Mr. McLean, and others, tried very hard to try to get a picture of what was being done, right? But as as I recall, 
when we did the RFP for waste management, it included remediation of the dump and dealing with the existing dump, right? And there was, when I was doing it in the 80s, the plan was to reduce the volume by some 80, 85% by mining the dump and using that stuff for energy and taking the good topsoil out of it and taking the precious metals that can be recycled out of it and all that kind of stuff and burning everything else. In recent years, they have been trying to convince me and others that they, it, it can't do that because the wet the, the dump is too wet. Well, it seems funny then that every time late they start a fire, up, the public, uh, fire people can't get it out, you know. But and we're, we're, we're now we're funding in this budget, right? Uh, I think it's some 15 to, to $20 million for remediation of the dump. And I'm almost positive that the original tender documents are included remediation. And now what they're talking about now is capping that mound and leaving it up there now. Right? Which, in, in, in my view, is, 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 is a bad solution. I think we need to reduce the volume, get down to the inner, use what we can use out of it, recycle what we can recycle, use it to... Because the problem we had when we did it was that the what we call the tip tonnage that was coming in on a daily basis could not drive a big enough waste energy plant to make it economical. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we were going to get the, the, the additional tip tonnage from by mining the existing dump and reduce that down and put it on a proper thermoplastic line. And remember, I put the first thermoplastic line in Little Cayman, you know. Well, they had the plans when I, when I, when I left it, but okay. I just, when it, when it, things that the the, the, the wonderful government that came in in 1993 did, you know, it was was demolish all of that. Uh-huh. <clears throat> okay. But we need to know what's going to happen, right? And does it include the, the, the pickup of garbage or is that going to be um, retained by government? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but it must be going to be retained if we go out. If it isn't, it's going, to, it's going to have serious implications for those persons who are employed there now. Well, not, not exactly. And, and the other side of it is that if you're going to, to, to cap that, whatever methodology they use, you, you drive across these cap dumps in Florida, you notice there's a flame burning all the time because that, that, as that thing um, degenerates, it, it creates methane gas. Mm-hmm. My understanding is that part of the plan in this case is that it's they capture. are going to harvest mm-hmm. the methane for other uses. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a huge pile of risk involved in that if you don't have a flame to take the pressures off. And I, I don't know, you know, but this is the kind of stuff that, that because otherwise, if you don't manage the, the harvesting of that methane, you could destroy Georgetown one one, one Sunday mm-hmm. evening. Okay. <laughs> we have two callers. Let's see whether or not we can accommodate both before the 9 o'clock uh, break. If not, we'll take one and take one after. First caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hey, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Happy New Year, Thomas. Same to you, sir. And you too, Mr. O'Connor. Yeah, thank you very much. Same to you too. Okay. Mr. Miller, I have a question for you. Okay. The fault that the Alter General found Concerning the collection of concessions, what were those? What was were, were those faults? And what is the government doing about it? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. But you are talking about the what you what the concerns raised by the general in in concessions awarded by the government usually to, to developers. <clears throat> well, the biggest concern was that nobody knows what it is, what the amount is. Secondly, there is no way of monitoring what the concession total is uh, because it's not based on any, any, any bill of quantities or, or stuff like that. And there has been some attempt by, by government. They're, they're supposed to be writing some uh, concession policy but that is dragging on and on and on and on. It doesn't seem to be ever quite ready because one of the things that we we were concerned about is that under the present situation, each developer is allowed to come and negotiate his own concessions. What we should have is what the government agrees for concessions. And by the way, that's already established in the hotel aid law. Right, mm-hmm. 
but that's been completely ignored. Now, I don't know how the government can have a law to which it pays no attention because it, it goes into great detail. For instance, no hotel between, just to make it easy, it, it has the mm-hmm. longitude and latitude, just to make it easy, between West, between Cemetery and Georgia, Cemetery can get any concessions okay. under that law. Okay. Okay. But that's a law. Mm-hmm. But yet we're given Dar all these concessions. We give we gave Ryan all of those concessions. Everybody goes down, they get concessions, but it's all illegal. Interesting. Right? The rest of the island, you, your duty was reduced to 2.5%. But then it also lays out all the criteria of how it's documented, what it is, mm-hmm. what can be included. Mm-hmm. And it even goes as far to say that if you bring in a couple of pieces of wood more than you were allocated to, to we're bringing in a couple of pieces more to, and you don't actually use it. You just can't arbitrarily use it somewhere else. You have to go back to customs and get permission to sell it. Mm-hmm. We've seen Mr. Ryan having all kind of um, fire sales down there and material that he got in under his concessions, right? So it, it, it's a huge mix-up. I've asked a question to, uh, uh, of the, the government. How can you do this in, in light of the hotel AIDS law, mm-hmm. right? Um, I didn't get, didn't get in a satisfactory answer. Yeah. But they're, 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 they're working around it, but the problem is that <clears throat> and my concern about each individual developer being able to reduce to negotiate their own deal and the fact that the de- that, that the negotiations are done with the politicians instead of the technocrats i think it is it, it, it that, that <clears throat> there is possibility there for 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 corruptive forces to influence if not take over okay let's grab the other caller caller good morning welcome to for the record happy new year to you good morning mr connor and mr miller is paul hurston good, good morning, morning captain, captain paul, paul. Happy yeah, New Year to you, and you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you hit my favorite subject about the garbage. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, I want, uh, of course, it's this time of year again, because uh, I want, want to find out why it is that they, it's only foreign uh, Christmas trees that they can munch. <laughs> yes. Uh, Good I question. Mean, that, that is, I've been uh, 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 asking this question for at least 20 years. All of those... Uh, play, uh, places where uh, marl has been dug down in the eastern district and these marl pits. Why don't they not dump some of this waste, this uh, 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 waste trees and all kinds of things up in there, mulch it, throw it up in there? After so many years, it you, you it, it could become soil and you mm-hmm. could plant something on it, and you would save the. Uh, but no, I guess I guess my stomach turns up sometime when I go up to the landfill, see the things that's thrown away up there. Mm, yep. And it, I mean, it, but I have been preaching this at least twenty years. I know, sir. I know. Uh, but nobody will listen. I can still get that, uh, that blonde wig and blue eyes, though. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get okay. That. And, All right, sir. And on the garbage, the garbage trucks when they. Uh, they're buying the state of the art things there. You don't need anything like that. You need the very minimal because this, the maintenance, the maintenance. Uh, uh, but these salesmen, they'll sell them anything. When you don't know what you, you, you want, what you need, people will sell you anything. That's right. That's and, right. And that's what's been going. Because I'm going to give you a little, I know my time is getting short now. Uh, mm. uh, here now. So around about two minutes. I've got to give you a little instance. You know, I worked for National Bulk Carriers for many, many years. Yes, uh, sir. Nine years about that. And their ships were the simplest thing that was aboard. If you knew your right hand and you wasn't colorblind, you couldn't make a mistake. Mm-hmm. You need, to, uh, when they're getting the, this material here, and they need to strip it down, get the bare uh, minimum mm-hmm. that you can operate it with, because that is the thing that causes it. That brings all the trouble, all this elect- new electric. I understand they had uh, cameras for biking up and all kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but, the, and these, these, these trucks are usually custom made for them, you know. They, they have, that's why it takes so long to get them made. I they, know. That, they, they can't walk on the lot and buy them. They've got they, they've all made special orders, so they could do all of that. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. I, 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 I'm aware of all of that. But, but we, don't, uh, we, don't, we don't, we don't, Mr. Cam Paul, we've lost the Caymanian way. Of doing things and applying that old Marner common sense, you know, and Caymanian common sense. And I'm also aware of, uh, uh, of the 
I would, I would, the things is because the more it, uh, the more it costs, the more somebody's going to make. Cause it's nothing about board anymore, you know. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's nothing about board. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to leave you all like that. I could talk all right, sir. I know, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Captain Paul. Week. Have a great day. Yeah. Okay, yeah. folks. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back immediately after headline news at nine o'clock with MLA. Mr. Ezard Miller, we're going to talk a little bit on uh, breaking news yesterday. A uh, new referendum question oh, has yeah, been yeah, yeah. Uh, developed as well. So we want to talk about that. Please stay tuned. Community Radio with a different appeal. The voice of the people. Security through adversity. Stuck on you. Radio for all time. You're listening to Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. Today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. It's only two species that we have here on my island. Your voice, your choice. For today's biggest news. Access. Information. Local, regional, international. This is headlines from Radio Cayman's newsroom team. Today's biggest news. A local law school talks Brexit. Laura Pineda has hosted a special lecture at the Truman Bodden Law School for students to help them get to grips with the causes and consequences of Brexit. She raised concerns about the uncertain impact of Brexit on Cayman, including a general negative effect on Cayman because of changing rules regarding financial aid, access to the EU's financial markets, and international trade. Iran has carried out a ballistic missile attack on air bases housing U.S. forces in Iraq in retaliation for the U.S. killing of General Qasem Soleimani. More than a dozen missiles launched from Iran and struck two air bases in Erbil and al-Assad west of Baghdad. It's unclear if there have been any casualties. And a Ukrainian Boeing 737 carrying 176 people has crashed in Iran, and officials say there is no chance of finding survivors. The majority of passengers were from Iran and Canada. Ukraine's Tehran embassy initially blamed engine failure, but later removed the statement. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. I'll stay in touch with Radio Cayman for the latest in news and information. Follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download the Radio Cayman app or log on to our website, www.radiocayman.gov.ky. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice, your radio. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. My pleasure to have in the studio with me uh, this morning, MLA, uh, Mr. Ezard Miller. Uh, we've been switching from subject to subject. Of course, this is the first part of the year. So we, we want to look at uh, some of the issues that we will be facing uh, during this year as well. And come the 20th of January, uh, we will the application for judicial review on the referendum process will uh, be heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, that well, I, those I, arguments will be heard then. Yeah. And uh, it was reported yesterday that the government had gazetted a new um, question sometime in December. Now, if you don't follow uh, the gazettes, you, 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 you won't know whether or not it's, it is there. Um, uh, you've had an opportunity to look at it, Mr. Miller? Yeah, um, and my original judgment that this one is worse than the first one, right? Um, because basically what it does is it, it's, it's introduced, instead of continuing, it now says continue to proceed. <laughs> right. Okay. Can, can um, you want to read the whole the whole question? Uh, I think the new question right. reads new something question. like this: Should the Cayman Islands continue to proceed with building the cruise berthing an enlarged and refurbished cargo an enlarged refurbished cargo port facility? So what they have done is they've changed to move forward mm-hmm. to continue to proceed, which is the same thing, <laughs> right? They've changed to enhance to enlarged and refurbished cargo port facility. Mm-hmm. What I don't understand is, 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 is the timing of this, right? If the government is trying to, in an effort to disrupt the judicial review process by introducing a new question, mm-hmm. right? When you, I, say, when you say disrupt, uh, are you, are you, are you, uh, you actually mean disrupt? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Because 
it, it has to be something like that. As I understand it, the judicial review was granted on four points, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The date was 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 a date that they didn't think it was a good date because it was too close to Christmas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The wording of the question. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, the fact that 200 and odd people who had registered, tried to get registered from June were not on the list or something like mm -hmm. that. And an impact, a new environmental impact assessment had to be done because the government had promised it on a new design. Right. Well, the data's already changed, <laughs> right? How the new date is fixed, I don't think that the courts are going to, 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 to select the date. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that is clearly the responsibility and the constitutional authority of cabinet. As well as the question. Right. The I question. think the question falls in that same category. Mm -hmm. And so what I don't understand is why are we why are we gazetted a new question? Right? I would have thought that it would have been better to wait to find out what the the judge's view of the existing question is, right? Because obviously the, the, the judge that gave them the granted the judicial review believes there's something wrong with the existing question, mm -hmm. right? Once you find that out, then you do a new question to meet those concerns of the court, right, and of the people. So I, I, I whether this is a way to try to remove that from consideration, right, as part of the uh, judicial review to now be able to go to the courts and say, well, we've changed the question, right? So we, 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 we've given that. We've changed the date. We've registered the people. So the only thing left on the judicial review is the environmental impact assessment. Okay, one of our listeners has uh, written in and said, it says, in any event, the judge will order them to remove the reference to the cargo port from the question because it was not in the uh, judicial review petition. I, I, think that's, I think that's a possibility because normally when you do referendums, the question in the referendum is normally expected to be generated from what we call a prayer mm -hmm. to the petition. Mm -hmm. What were the people signing against? Okay. What were the people signing for, right? The cargo, the cargo dock is not a part of the petition that the referendum seekers were objecting to, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, that's a possibility. But I would have thought that the government would have been better served, one, to have drafted a, a, a number of alternative questions when hearing what the court's position is on the existing question and what is the reason why they granted the judicial review of the question, mm -hmm. then put forward a number of alternatives to which the court would accept that yes, this is this 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 meets the criteria, right? Because I don't think the court uh, under the constitution and the referendum legislation that, that surrounds it can word the question. Right. No, no. no and I think that's can. that's the you yes. know but I think that I think they could put certain um, certain criteria, right? And certain expectations of whether the question and based on international best practices and norms. Because remember now that when they when this was presented to Parliament, right? Basically, in the, the, the first round, it was the, 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 the CPR legal views and everything was just discounted mm -hmm. because we had all followed best practices, right? But then we altered the whole law based on their legal representation, right? And we, we, we put the question where it, uh, in the regulations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's why they can change it by Gazette noticing it because it's in the regulations, not in the law. If it was in the law, it had to be brought back to the legislative the assembly. assembly. Right? Exactly, yes. Um, so, I I don't I I I don't um, understand why the government would 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 gazette an alternative question at this phase. It, it it doesn't. I can't wrap my head around it and 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 rationalize why it would be effective. But mm -hmm. you know that's probably the reason I, why not government. I believe you have a caller. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yes. Good morning, OC. Uh, morning, sir. How are you? Not too bad. And how are you? Fine, thanks. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Miller. Good morning, sir. How are you? Just like when you were poor. Happy New Year, too. <laughs> Same to you, man. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Miller. Um, I want to make some statements, and I want to ask you a question in the end. Okay. Okay? 
Um, listen to that. The Kimanian people, I have to say, mostly like in my age group and 25 years back from my age. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a different, it's a different sort of culture that is boiling into our culture, you know. Mm-hmm. If you understand what I mean. So, uh, so far, throughout the last two to three governments that I can speak of, I can't speak about what took place too much about before because I wasn't around, at least. I can read about what took place, but I can't really understand what really is going to happen. But, Mr. Miller, I want to tell you something that the... The, the the people that in my age group, I would say, or you know, we we know what tourism is all about. You know, mm-hmm. we a lot of the generation before us, or we, even with us, went to see too. But the people that are coming now into our cultural Caymanian style, those kind of people are disrupting. And I'm talking about the different nationalities that are coming into the Cayman Island society, you know. Mm-hmm. And for us to really observe these people or, or take care of these people when they come here, it's be, going to be almost impossible because of the strains that have hit us over the years to governments that have been in the Cayman Islands. They haven't really seen, no, they didn't have any foresight in my box. To really see, because right now, they, the, the the government that is in play now is telling us about that we need to build to change the, the Georgetown Harbor. I agree. Yes, we need a port, a, a much bigger cargo port. Yes, but when it comes about drilling to accommodate the mega ships coming into our country, Mr. Miller, to me, it, it is almost. I wonder who. What, what what kind of intelligence or what kind of history the the, the people that are in charge of our people, the government I mean mean they're talking about. Oh, how are how are they thinking? What 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 are they thinking about? Is it just dollars or is it the Caymanian people? Oh, I mean, it, it, it sickens me to think that we have smart, intelligent people in the government that's supposed to be our leaders. And they're shooting us this load of crap about we need to build a a a a, a, a pair of <coughs> mega ships. That all these people are doing is going from island to island, from little Caribbean. The Caribbean is the melting part of the whole world right now. Everybody want to come to the Caribbean, and the people that are here that we supposed to own the Caribbean. But the people that are coming in, taking advantage of us, the Caymanian people, and so many other <coughs> That Mr. Miller, we need somebody like you to be the next premier, sir. I have to tell you that because it's only you. You're the only light that I see right now that can really get us through to the next level, you know? Mm-hmm. And Mr. Miller, I really appreciate what you have done, what you have done over the years Thank you, for sir. the Cayman mm-hmm. Island people, because mm-hmm. you uh, seem to be the only one. When I say the only one that I can, with my little two cents brain, can look at and say, that's the man that needs to be leading the Cayman Island people or taking us into the other central decade or whatever that I might be around. Okay. Because if we don't get somebody like you, uh, I must run over souls, man, because what we going through, Mr. Miller, you know it, mm-hmm. I know it, mm-hmm. OC know it, and if we don't do something about it now, I feel, I really feel hard. I mean, <coughs> how how can we expect our children to really get anything when when it's time for them to get something? That's the problem. Okay, we're not we're not planning for the future. Thank you very okay, much, well, Carlos. Thank you, my friend. Have, have, a good, have a good week. Uh, for that. Okay. Okay, we're going to take right. a commercial break. Folks, please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. 
Hi, I'm thinking of buying a car from the States. Which port do you ship out of? Hi, we ship out of Miami, Houston, and Brooklyn. Just let us know your port of choice and we can provide you with a quotation and answer any questions you may have on insuring and protecting your vehicle during its journey. Shipping shore to shore, seaport. Well, Happy New Year to all, Anna. I hope everybody had a good Christmas because I will locked up in my house. This week, they say we're going to have our parents on Youth Flex so we can have our intergenerational discussion on our range of issues. Starting with me and you and you too. Jermaine Edwards is our featured artist for this week. Lord, I will always keep you in my heart because nothing I know is equanimity, E-Q-U-A-N-I-M-I-T-Y. It's a noun that refers to the state of being calm and in control of your emotions, especially in a difficult situation. You can join us this Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. right here on Radio k 89.9 FM. You can also check us out on YouTube Live. And for Youth Flex, a program for all people, by your people. So Youth Flex, Morning Talk. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system for information that matters. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. My pleasure to have in the studio with me this morning, none other than MLA, uh, Mr. Ezard Miller. Um, any, any more on the referendum question that you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't, um, my dilemma is why now, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I don't think these things happen by happenstance, right? Because uh, I think both, both, both these parties, the CPR and the, 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 the government are, 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 are consumed by trying to get their their um, their position improved, and, and and the CPR people want the referendum, and, and obviously they they want to, uh, and and the government, if they're forced to have the referendum, which they are now constitutionally bound to hold, they want to 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 make it as 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 likely as possible for themselves to succeed, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the dilemma that that that, that we're in, you know. And I don't understand the the, 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 the the rationale for bringing forward a question at this time. And, and the cha- my view is that the changes they've made to it makes it, uh, it the question is worse than the original. That, that's just my view. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, scanning the article here to see whether or not the, the writer of this article was able to obtain any comment from uh, government officials in uh, relation to this, but uh, I haven't seen anything in that regard uh, here, here, here at all. Not nothing, nothing um, whatsoever. No, no, that did it. Yeah, I, and and there was no, there was no announcement. There was, as far as I know, it was just because that it. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, we we can take a look at 2019, uh, what uh, was accomplished, <coughs> and uh, some of the things that you look forward to doing in 2020 uh, in relation to, to, let's talk about your political uh, party, the formation of yeah, the well, political we, we, party, we, we, and we, where, we, where, we, where we managed we're at to, with that. Right, we managed to, to, to get a constitution approved by the group. Uh, we managed to get the party registered. Um, we have the, the name is the Cayman Islands People's Party. We will be trading as People's Party. Um, we've got our colors, um, which are um, gold and, and, and blue, okay. registered with the stuff. We've got a, lo- a, a logo, uh-huh. which is a, a ship's wheel with an anchor in the middle of it. You know, we, we want to get we want to get the ship back on the right course, uh-huh. right? And we want to lean on our, our maritime heritage as the anchor to our country. Um, by next week, I'm hoping that we'll have um, approval for our nonprofit status, which is not a requirement of the election law that political right. part has nonprofit status. Mm-hmm. But I, what I'm trying to do is to set something up that is open, transparent, and I think being a nonprofit organization forces the party, even if I am not around, 
right, to do some things publicly and transparently, particularly when it comes to funds, mm -hmm. right? Um, then our job now, from now until probably about June or July, is the creation and establishment of the 19 electoral district committees because that is the genesis, the grassroots of, of the party. That's where the, the, the membership, that is the people that are going to select the candidates. Mm -hmm. Me and three or four people are not sitting down in a dark room and, and, and select candidates and bring them and impose them on, on, on the district. And uh, the kind of timeline is if we can get that done by, like I said, July or August, then each each electoral district will send three people to form a central uh, council, and they have to elect proper officers and all that and constitute that by sometime September, October, looking for a launch of the political party in January 2021 uh, with, a, with a huge um, celebration with thousands of people there, mm -hmm. and then move straight into the campaign for the May election. Okay, and but the elections in May, you, 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 you think that January of uh, 2021 is early enough f in terms of identifying candidates? No, no, the candidates, will be, the candidates will be identified long before that. Oh, long before that. Right, okay. and the okay. candidates will be um, campaigning under, mm -hmm. the, under the guide of the Electoral District Committee. Okay, And I'm okay. talking about launching the party okay. as an official party, yes, yes, an yes, official, yes, yes. that's the launch of the actual campaign got you. will be probably around National Heroes Day in January. Okay which has some significance to, 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 to people. Now, wh what is your view of the political environment, bearing in mind that the current Premier, the Al Al Honorable Alden McLaughlin, cannot stand as Premier again because the Constitution restricts him to two consecutive terms? Yeah. Do you see that as, do you see any advantage in that in relation to 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 uh, a, a, another established political party being able to gain a foothold because of one the likelihood of infighting amongst them it's already started. if 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 it if it isn't resolved <coughs> you know in a way that uh, there is consensus as to who they they would if they were elected as the gov new government who would be their premier, do you see any advantages or disadvantages in the fact that the premier can, uh, will oh, not I, be able to I, I run as that, premier again? I think, that there, I think that there are opportunities for a new entity to, to, to come on the scene, particularly because of the unity and the fusion of the two political fractions that existed before. Mm -hmm. because. You, the, the choice prior to the last election was you, you supported the PPM because you agreed with their stance or you supported the UDP, CDP, whatever it's kind of going to be called. I think a CDP is a real name for it now, right? So you had a choice. Now that they've fused, right, and formed the unity, mm -hmm. they, they can't extract themselves for an election campaign. I mean, that's going to be almost impossible to do. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the, the Lim Democrats and the Conservatives in the UK, what happened to the yes, Democrats, yes, right? Yes, yes. Because the, the the CDP has nothing to run on. Everything that is that is being succeeded and successful in the country is by the progressives, and because they're the minority in, in it. Mm -hmm. So I believe that there is there, that provides a per, particular opportunity for a new group, a new entity to come on the scene, especially trying to bring to the table the kind of ethics and 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 and. and, and uh, Honesty and integrity to the whole process, right? Um, I suspect that they, that you, you write about the infighting in the in the progressives as to who will be the the, the new leader. There is no obvious um, there is no obvious uh, prince at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's going to cause them some 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 consternations, um, both before and after the elections. Um, because one of the things that I would hope, it, it, the way I have set up, the way not me, but the way the committee that put this thing together set up the People's Party, is the premier is not going to be decided by the ten people who sit in LA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the the premier or leader of the opposition or or the, the, or the party leader is decided by those six or two people, right? Yes. Um, I don't think that the 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 so I don't know how they are going to, 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 to sort out 
who's going to. I mean, they're they're obvious. They're, they're, it's obvious that certain people are positioning themselves right to take advantage of, 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 of Mr. McLaughlin's departure, right? Um, so, I, I believe that that that, that we that is, is there's some opportunities to to, to get some seats um, because certain people have gone against what the campaign done in terms of, of, of how they got in government and what they did and what they're currently doing. Um, so I, I think that there, I think there's some weak spots um, and we hope to, to, to get enough people elected in the People's Party to, to form the new government. And it is still your intention to run candidates in every electoral every constituency? It, the, the objective is to set up an electoral district committee in each electoral district and for each of those to put forward a candidate. Okay, we have a I caller again. Again, I not I'm, I I don't think that that, that that the party should be so dictatorial or so judgmental as to decide that we want to go into run in ten constituencies mm-hmm. because that's what we need the party. Yes. Yes. That in itself, that's not my mantra of participatory mm-hmm. democracy. We have to give every single electoral district equal opportunity to participate in the process, equal opportunity to get a representative elected, and equal opportunity to have their representative promoted to the highest excellence of the government. Okay, uh, let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome good to For the Record. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning. All right, I'll be as brief as possible. I thoroughly enjoyed what Mr. Paul Hurston had to say. Neither am I blue-eyed and blonde. I can trace <laughs> my grandfather back about five generations in the Cayman Islands. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, one of the topics that propped up this morning was the garbage um, issue. Mm-hmm. And of course it is an issue, but I, I think the overall, the entire picture is what seems to be missing people is <laughs> where are we going to put this mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. okay all right well hopefully that's being discussed and tackled and in the meantime we have the mechanical breakdowns to deal with i wonder if i could make mr paul made a simple suggestion about um processing vegetation mm-hmm. i wonder if i could make one simple suggestion to the people that might hear this yes you can to protect the equipment would they consider removing the sleeping policemen off a of Seymour Drive? You ever witnessed a garbage truck hitting a sleeping policeman and jumping six feet off the ground? Yeah, but I'm not going to do the sleeping policeman, so with the greatest respect, I got to do the drive uh-huh. of the garbage truck. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Moving, right. the, moving the sleeping policeman, they, they, they put, the reason they put the sleeping policeman, the guy who was driving too fast in the first instance. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> all right. Maybe we're getting somewhere. Okay. Finally, before I leave, I want to say something that I hope every Caymanian hears. We suffer from an incurable disease called begrudgefulness. (laughs) And those who try to make it are kept down. Those that are down are tried to keep from making it. But it seems like we have one goal in life. And that's to keep the next man down. Mm-hmm. And it causes us to lose all of our identity. I cringe sometimes when I hear I'm talking about Cayman culture and Cayman tradition. I honestly do. I honestly do. And I hope and pray that from the premier down, we'll try to set an example huh? mm-hmm. of what it means to touch bases with your people, okay? Because I am well aware that those who come here, those who come here are looking for a better way, okay? They're not coming here necessarily because they love Cayman Union. They love Cayman Island, the jewel of the Caribbean. Huh? Yep. Yes. Agree with you. Money can buy anything. That's why we need to look at ourselves and try and help <clears throat> and encourage each other to move along and live a life of peace and harmony. Yes, yes. All right. I 
keep listening. Thank you very much, Carla. Yeah, Thank so you very much, Carla, for that. Really, really poignant. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah uh, I agree with the call. He needs to come and join my political party so we can get it done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a caller. Do we take the call before the break, Ms. Susan? Uh, caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hello, good morning, Ms. Susie. Hey, morning. How are you? Same to you, man. All right, I will be fine, Ms. Susie. I come tonight at the break. Um, yeah. I recall um, 2017 election, right? The, the current Speaker of the House, he didn't uh, put three candidates in three continuous stuff, right? Dr. Central, Prospect, and Newlands. You recall that, right? That was in what? What In 2017? Yeah. The Speaker yeah, of the House, yeah, yeah. Oh. he didn't put uh, candidates in. Yeah, there you are. Right, 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 yes, yeah. But, yeah I, I have a point now. Okay. You know, um, um, you know, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Obviously, the, the MLA, obsolete now. So, we, 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 the party president, you know, MLA, show the question. Right? And um, I, I want to know if, if, if you can make a motion towards the, 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 the herbs. Obviously, you, you are pharmacists in chemistry. Uh huh. Right? If, if, if you can, the streets is definitely in a fast lane, right? With the modern times. You got to surpass certain things. Whatever diminutive pedophile things, we need to go over that. Or, 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 or the hurdles. So, see? And the final thing I say now, the British, right, the British Empire from the 1800s, 1930s, right? They formed the Hong Kong court, and the Opium Wars. You see where I come from? That's uh-huh. the system. So, uh, a lot of changes in the wind, you know? Okay. Okay. Yes, so. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, caller, for that. Time for us to take a commercial break. When we return, the conversation with MLA, Mr. Ezra Miller, will continue. So please stay tuned. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. I have various items coming from different suppliers that I need to ship to Cayman. Do you offer consolidation? Yes. Seaboard Marine offers consolidation for full and less than container loads. We can hold your packages at our Miami warehouse until everything arrives and ship it all in one go. And we have the best rates to Grand Cayman. Visit SeaboardMarine.com for more information. Radio Cayman maintaining the innovation. On a daily basis, making it easy to connect with you, our listeners. Add us to WhatsApp today, 925-3261. That's 925-3261. Radio Cayman. Send a text or voice note. Can I send a request, please? Uh, you don't really have to ask us. Just send a request. This is a shout-out to my ex. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman maintaining the innovation. For the record, with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record, with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me. It's MLA, uh, Mr. Isaac Miller. Before we go on, one of our listeners has uh, written in and uh, they were commenting. Uh, they have commented about other comments that they have heard, not n- not on this show, but uh, on other radio stations about the um, exemption for course order that was made by the Chief Justice in relation to um, uh, Ms. Uh, Shirley Rolston and the, the CPR um, group and the the judicial review application Mm -hmm. and it is being touted as a milestone for the Cayman Islands of first and the writer has pointed out uh, that uh, the uh, such an order has been made in the public interest matter the first public interest matter brought was uh, by the ladies of the uh, West Bay a road and they successfully obtained a cost order um, and that we should keep the public informed of that uh, correct information that um, that uh, the you sure they got the, a cost uh, order? Uh, they said uh, this person says and this person, yeah, I, I, this I know, person I know, they, know. They, had, they had extreme difficulty yeah getting, they had uh, uh, getting, uh, getting legal aid yes and all that, yes right? yes yes um, yeah 
they may have got a cost. Yeah, I think the person who has written this is no, de- definitely I think that, in, and in, and the, I don't in that, that regard. The importance of of, of, of of this is that it is, it is a decision that the, the importance about that cost or the decision is that the courts are supporting mm-hmm. the the um, applications for judicial reviews, which is one of the things that I've always maintained is absent in Cayman jurisprudence mm-hmm. because we have three co-equal arms of government, the civil service under the governor, the legislative assembly under the, well, under the premier, the, and the courts. And it is, in, it, it, is, it is necessary for there to be a dynamic balance between those two things. And one of the things that does has not been happening in Cayman, because although we'll tell people we got a, what is eight, 900,000 lawyers, most of them don't go to courthouse. Mm-hmm. They just mm-hmm. shuffle people around and make mm-hmm. plenty of money. Mm-hmm. They, we have not had enough of administrative review and, and um, judicial review of government decisions and administrative review of laws and their effectiveness, etc., etc., etc. So I'm glad to see that they're leaning that way because it would, it may encourage others to 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 take things for for judicial review. Yeah, and, and I have some concerns concerns about this tendency that we have about being the first in this and being the first in that, and it sometimes gives the impression that you're more interested in what your position is on the totem pole than you are in terms of what it is that you are trying to achieve in terms of the, uh, it of the public of, good, it detracts from you know from, it, it, from it detracts that. from the from the original purpose of common good. Yes, right. Yeah, um, but it is a trend that, that we need more of because we need more advocates in in, in, in the courthouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, because one one of my great concerns for this country is access to Cayman and access to justice. And, and one of the things that we need to um, that we need to complete is, you know, the Attorney General, the current Attorney General, has been talking now for a decade, if not more, about inducing some kind of legislation which will allow um, lawyers to be compensated from the pre- proceeds of, 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 of action. Which I think would, would you know, because the, the big barrier to to Caymanians getting justice now, particularly in in actions against government or, or, or civil matters is money mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. you know if you unless you're prepared to put up a couple of hundred thousand dollars to take any kind of civic action in Cayman now is is, 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 is is an expensive exercise and and one of the things if we, you know I, I think the the the, the review the, the overview of the courts into our legislative and, and administrative mm-hmm. decisions and framework needs to be more more active mm-hmm. because I, I think that'll improve the situation. Okay, okay. Uh, no callers, Miss Susan, at this point in time? Well, one caller? Let's uh, grab the caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Connor and Camilla. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I heard a speaker before before the last one you had there came up with something that's very interesting. It, and I got it, what I got to say about it, it's a fact. With all these diseases that take throughout the world, not only the Cayman, throughout the world, all the government and everybody else is trying to do is to try to keep down these things and these cures that can be done right here in Cayman, try to keep them down and try to keep down. First, but make me tell you something, buddy. They ain't going to keep me down. I've been in this now for 34 years, and I'm going to continue it. You all have a good day. Thank you very much, uh, caller, for, for that, and uh, all the best to you in your uh, ventures as well. Um, Mr. Miller, mm-hmm. one of the reasons that i like to have you on the show is because you you, you know you, you are prepared to take, on, on, the hard, take on the hard <laughs> questions you know, as well. Yep. And um, I'm not known for my diplomas in Duncan and Hyde. Yes, and I and I know that you, while you're one of the driving forces between uh, uh, behind the formation of your uh, of a political party, um, at the end of the day, your intentions are basically to step aside and let the process 
work, right? Mm -hmm. We have heard, and we, even this morning again, we have heard um, a, a caller or a couple of callers express their views that their preference for political leadership in this country as premier would be you and that you would do an excellent job. And But there are naysayers out there as well who would say otherwise. And uh, one of the um, constant, I shouldn't say, I use this word constant um, guardedly, but one of the refrains has been whether or not the business community has any uh, serious concerns about um, your uh, political ideology and some of the things that you advocate. And what would you say to, to, to those persons who have uh, well, that, that's that view? A, that's a myth about, about me that the various political groups have used for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, some of that is grounded in the fact that this little Northside boy came into Georgetown and challenged the business bourgeois and, and, and successfully ran his own drugs, pharmacies and medical business and, and, and was successful enough that I could move into to, to politics and, and, and not be beholding to them. Mm -hmm. and, and I have been able to maintain my, my independence and my integrity of purpose. Um, but the business community has nothing to fear from me. I mean, you, you, you look at my track record. What what have I done other than to try to improve the economic environment in which businesses operate? Um, and, and anybody that, that puts that forward and you ask a simple question will we'll give me an example. You know, for instance, one of the things that they say about me is, is I'm xenophobic and I hate foreigners. <laughs> well, show me a foreigner that has a took advantage of. I have been in several positions in this country, including chairman of the board, of the immigration board, where I could have seriously, if, if that was my intention, altered and affected people's ability to in business to get work permits and all that. I, I maintain that I was one of the most accessible chairman that the, 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 the board ever had. I was there every Tuesday, every Thursday, and anybody could come make an appointment, come see me. Uh, on the other hand, I believe that business has a certain civic responsibility. Um, one of the things that, that bothers me about the business community in Georgetown or in the whole island, and because it goes to the, the hotel industry, the financial industry, is the fact that many Caymanians working in those private businesses haven't had an increase in salary for 10 years. One of the things that I, I, I said to the Premier when he announced the civil service increase which I support. Mm -hmm. I never supported, as you know, cutting the civil service salary. Right. That was totally unnecessary. It was a scapegoat at the time, and it was all wrong. It's to encourage the private sector, call in the movers and shakers of the private sector to, 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 to ask them to match the government stuff, right? Because the, 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 the inflationary aspect of the salary, which, which people are predicting, is going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. The civil servants will have a little more income to manage that spiraling thing, but those in the private sector are not. Mm -hmm. And and you know I tell people that that one of my biggest political mistakes was when I got elected in in, in eighty four. Um, we had gone through the the the, the some uh, workers turmoil. You will remember. Oliver Hill and others who laid the, 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 the fight against cable and wireless to get better benefits for their people. Mm -hmm. You will remember the construction sites like a holiday and being closed down yes, because yes. it wasn't treating people, etc., yeah. etc. Mm -hmm. And when I looked around at, at, at how do we address those things, I chose, because I thought it was, was the right choice at the time, not to look for the political expedient way of setting up a labor union, which was open for the grabs in, in, in early 1980s in this, this country, was I took the, 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 the more conservative approach. And instead of, of, of setting up a labor union to tangle with the, the forces, with, with, with the owners and the business people, we, I went down the road of 
demanding through private members motion labor legislation mm -hmm. and, and to raise the standards of the worker because I, I naively expected that the business people and the moors and shakers would have been a part of that and would have stepped up and saw the benefit mm -hmm. of better rewarding the, the conditions under the people working and, 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 and stuff. And that was a mistake because the business people used the labor law to inflict, to inflict greater harm on the working people. And they manipulated the, 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 the legislation itself to their advantage. Because as a young legislator then, I didn't understand the forces of lobby, right? <laughs> and the forces of how, how the, 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 the private sector influences legislation. And it is in a, it, it's more, today is even more than oh, it was yes, then. Yes. But nobody talks about it. The people that are being left out of the equation are the Caymanians and the Caymanian workers because they have nobody to lobby for them. This way and age, some of them even want to write the legislation, not just influence they it. They do, <laughs> and, 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 and they did it then too. Yeah. And, and they, so the standards in the workplace have not kept pace with our economy. The, the salaries in the workplace, that is why I had to introduce when I became a minister, health insurance legislation, we had to introduce pensions, right? And remember all the controversies. Remember um, Dr. Roy Borden did a whole employment law, mm -hmm. which was a very balanced piece of yep, legislation. Yep, yep. They killed it. Yep. They killed it. Never saw the light of day then. And, yeah. and, and that is why we have people today who are retiring without health care benefits, without pension benefits, and are falling back as to be wards of our society. Mm -hmm. And we have to address these things, right? So the, in, in terms of, I, I think that I am not ashamed of my, my, my track record. I, I, I think my track record in governance at all levels is defendable. I, I, don't, I wasn't perfect. I made mistakes. But I'm man enough to say, if I made a mistake, listen, I, I screwed up. Let's yep. start over. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know? So, but it's 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 one of those things that that I will have to will have to overcome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I mean, there is no guarantee that the thing that I'm setting up well, is going to make me the premier. Premier, yes. You know, yes, yes. I mean, this is not a situation where I am selecting Tom, Dick, and Harry mm -hmm. to run because I got help me get elected. Yes. So you have to support me as premier. It's, yeah, it's not as its party. Yeah. That's right. Okay. No, no. Let's take our last commercial break. I know that's Mr. Very Miller wants to, me. to speak yeah. uh, about some of the things in his district and some uh, upcoming events in his district as well. Mm -hmm. So please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back after this short and last commercial break. 2020 means perfect vision. And if you have your sights set on driving a new hybrid, then the time is now to check out the new RAV4 and CHR. Just two of the many hybrid models that Vamped is bringing to Cayman. Whether you're looking for a smoother and quieter way of driving or want a car that maximizes fuel efficiency while minimizing emissions, there are lots of ways a new hybrid from Vamped can make the difference in your life. Hybrids save fuel, run cleaner, reduce CO2 emissions, and even recharge their batteries without being plugged in. So focus your 2020 vision on a new hybrid from Vamped Motors, and we will see you through. Come to Vamped, home of the hybrid, located on Walker's Road. Headlines. With the latest headlines. Headlines. One of Cayman's bright and shining young stars. Local, regional, international. Headlines. Turning to international news. Updates on the hour between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. on weekdays. All the news when you want it. Tune in to Radio Cayman for hourly headlines of the day's top stories. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice, your radio. For the record with Ort Connor. Initiating system. For information that matter. For the record with Ort Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me, Emily and Mr. Ezard Miller. We have one caller. We're going to make this the last caller for the morning. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Mr. For the Record. Good morning. Morning, Doc. How are you? 
And good morning to uh, Mr. Miller. Good morning. So I told you we're going to be here this morning with Mr. With, with, with Mr. With Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> no, I didn't know. He didn't uh, tell. I, when I heard when I when I heard you on Monday, I thought you were back in you were back in the chair permanently, <laughs> and I was very pleased with that. Uh, I'll have him here as much as yeah. I can, as often oh, yeah. as I can. Yes. Well, if you ask me, I'll come on the next day when you come uh, on. All right, you you come over here next Wednesday because I I need to pick your brain for a couple of things. Okay, okay. Now, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Um, the the cost order. Now, cost order will not be um, allowed if if it's if 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 the judicial review system is between party and party. Um, you know, um, a party is the, um, the party who 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 loses the action will be saddled with the cost. Right. But when you have judicial review that is of a public interest, right, a constitutional interest, it's different. Yes, and and we saw that ha- what happened in the Tower Rivers case. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Although the court stated that it was a matter of public interest and it was of the action um, de- dealt with the court interpreting the constitution as to whether or not w- um, the, the the criteria for for being elected in the Cayman Islands under Section Six to one of the constitution. Even though the court said that was the action was about that, and that the court was not minded to offer to 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 award costs, the, the court did go on to order costs. Right. And so now people people now are going to the court now, and are saying, "Hey, my action is a as a matter of public interest, and it's a matter of of, of a constitutional issue, and therefore um um therefore it's 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 not personal. It's mm-hmm. not it's it's not it's not an action in persona. Yeah. It, it's an action in rem." And mm-hmm. therefore, and therefore, we want we want to we want a course order uh, uh, before before the action begins, so that so that we don't be saddled with, with the government coming back and saying that we, well, you brought us to court, um, and, and after we after we breach a constitutional issue or something, we, we, we you brought us to, and then you have to pay the, pay the government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but do you agree with my but that, with my hope that w- or one of the things that we need more of is we need more judicial review of the actions of government and the legislation that we put in place. Well, sure. Sure, Mr. Miller. Mm-hmm. W- 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 one of the things that I'm disappointed, and I'm using this forum right now, yep. to ask Mr. Roper, the governor of this country, I spoke to him last year on another radio station, mm-hmm. and he said that he was minded to uh, to enact the, 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 the Section 117 of the Constitution, the Standard and public life law. Right. I have been waiting up for months and months and months. It's 2021, and I am calling on him now 20. to do that mm-hmm. before this, the, the first quarter of this uh, of this year fall, falls falls away. Mm-hmm. That is something that that Mr. Miller, your party, and myself, and some other people should do. We should build, bring judicial review on that. Yep. Well, you know, there's, there's, I agree with you. The things like that, that 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 we need to do, because you know, the, the government keeps telling me. Because I keep questioning them about it. Why aren't we bringing this law in? It is that the pri- it is the people in the private sector who are objecting to the law because they don't want to do the disclosures that the law requires to ensure transparency in the decision process and 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 and, and to to limit the opportunities for corruption. Well, and I'm Miller. telling the government, listen, but this is a law that the parliament passed. We, we don't we don't we don't we don't go out and ask people if if if, if, if because they don't agree that, that they feel we should get twelve conks to say the eight that we yes. don't bring the legislation in place. But Mr. you see Mr. that it Mr. goes back to the to the old adage, Mr. Dr. McField. It is who's objecting. Yes, yes. But right? Mr. Miller, it is a constitutional requirement. I agree with you. A few people in the con- in, in the country object to a constitutional requirement. I just do not understand that at all. Mm-hmm. Mr. Miller, I do not understand that at all, and so maybe, maybe I would like to get get together with you because the only alternative, if you, if if you're not going to bring it to you, I am prepared to pay my passage, and I'm prepared to go and to picket the foreign commonwealth office, uh, stand out there, and let the world world see how we are how we are disobeying our constitution, and that we have no respect for the for the very law of the land. Or let's let's, 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 let's you and I have a conversation about the the, 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 the possibility of taking some action because there, there's yeah. a an, another thing that 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 I would like to get some legal advice on, and and that is the 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 ability for for people to refuse to answer questions on public expenditure based on some some frivolous, in my view, 
some unjustifiable excuse that it, it, it needs to be confidential. It's public money. All of these lawsuits we are setting and, 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 and we're setting them with this non-disclosure clause so not even the people who are proving the money know who's get, know, know what money is going where. Yes. Needs yes. to be challenged. I am happy to get with you for that. And you call me anytime when you get off the station or before, or this weekend here. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll call you um, during the week because um, I, when I leave here, I'm going straight to, to, to another meeting. Yes. But, but but we need to talk. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Miller. Okay. Thank right. you. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for your advice. Thank you very much, Doc. Have welcome. a nice day. Have a nice day. Uh, uh, Mr. Miller, uh, mm-hmm. some of the announcements that you want to uh, to make as well. We, we have about yeah, six well, we, left. We, just to say that and, and to remind all the senior citizens that we have our senior citizen program uh, as started by yesterday. And the, 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 the group laid out what they, they want to do for the next couple of weeks. And, and, and you know, they want to, 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 to do some out and get some trips out of town, you know, as a group. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to tell you, I was, I'm dealing with one of my friends at a rent a car trying to get a little 10, 11 seat, a bus to buy, you know, on some, some, some a, a affordable terms, <laughs> right? So we can do this kind of transportation. Yes. So they're back and they, 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 the principal of the school has agreed to, for us to continue with the um, children. Having lunch with them once a month, different classes. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to get with, with Miss Evelyn now at, at, at Clifton Hunter and, and go and meet with the principal over there to, to try to get something similar. Uh, but big announcement, big announcement. We're starting at the quadrille classes. Well, Monday I, night, you must come. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, six, 6 30, Monday night, because um, you know, we have a nice little uh, group of young people that Mr. Mr. Brian Watler mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, trained. And, and they perform all over for yes, all the official they functions, they and they do yes. a great job. Yes. So we can try to get the the, 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 the adults now in, in back into it, and you know, and when we, the first Pirates Week function, the, the first year we had Pirates Week, one of the things that we wanted to do in our side was to do this quadrille dance. So Mr. Um, Burnell Dixon and East End mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We had Rod. I used to I used to get Rod let to come in. I, I think it was on a Tuesday night, you know. Um, we paid him some little pittance out of my pocket. Um, but I used to stop Lorna Gas Station, right? Or Moslins, buy a gallon of fruit punch and a QQ white rum. Right? <laughs> I'd pour out a glass of fruit punch on myself because I didn't drink. And then pour the QQ into, the, in, into that gallon and we'd pass that around and everybody. You know, right now, and let me tell you something. Some of the most entertaining thing was to watch those people like um, Mr. Clifton um, and Miss and, and, um, Ethelin. Or, or just watch Miss Eflin and Mr. Sir Rankin do do what they call a jig, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I mean two step wall sins and all that kind of stuff. I mean people it was it was just fascinating. Wow. So I was learning the quadrille and, and, and there was a certain there was a certain uh move that, that I just couldn't get. And uh, <laughs> Mr Mr. Dixon was getting rather irritated with uh-huh, me, right? Uh-huh. Um and, and he finally looked at me and he says, Young man you're not even Miller Grand Son, man. You can do this. What's my navel? What's my navel? What's my navel? <laughs> and I've never forgotten that. Right? And, 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 and so said, I, I, I found I got it. Uh, but, 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 you know, again, but these are the kind of things that, 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 that we are missing from our community. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the little, we used to, the, the old people used to call them kitchen dances. Yes. We just need these kind of common events for people to come out and, and, and just enjoy life, you know? So we're gonna start with quadrille, and who knows what we get into? Because we had a program there last year, but the, the instructor couldn't continue it. Where we every two evenings a week, um, a lady would come from Georgetown up there, and we're teaching the children um, dancing. You know, we're doing tap dance, singing, and, and, and um, all of that. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a, I have a whole uh, cupboard of, of, of tap dancing shoes, oh. <laughs> right? They're all too small for me and you, but you know. <laughs> Hopefully we can get this going on a, on, on a Monday night and people will do that. Outside of that, um, I'm, I must take the opportunity um, to offer my sincerest sympathy and condolences to the family of, of Paul Darwin Ebanks. Um, oh, yes, yes, the, uh, yes. young man that, mm-hmm. that, that passed away suddenly. Um, I, I don't think the family would, would, would be upset with me if I said that the, the funeral service, because I've been asked by a few people, the funeral service is, is planned for Sunday evening at the Civic Center at 3 p.m. Okay. Um, we also, I'm, I'm hoping that at long last, and we're going to get the, the work that was, you know, the promised me faithful in the finance committee, the whole um, ministry committed to it to start working on the, the dangerous further road and removing the impediments that this lawyer um, has put in the road there 
to make that safer was supposed to be done in December. Nothing has been done. I'm hoping it can start in January. Mm-hmm. Water Key Road, as you know, is in a deplorable state. Um, should have been done over the summer last year. Um, I'm hoping to get that started soon. So, and the restroom facilities down at uh, Saint Starfish Point should be should be completed quickly. So, we have to go now and you know the old beet willow tree that used to be 20 feet from the road. Yes, yeah. And and and, and you know, Kai was washing away. And the government has come up with this proposal to put groins around the place. Yeah, and I, I spoke about that before. Try yeah. to point out to them that groins don't work. <laughs> They're not working down there, right? Um, what works down there is a low wall, right, to keep the sand in. Um, but they're, they're, they're going to work on that. But the the piece, that property, you'll notice when you go there, has groins on both boundaries. And the whole middle of it is washing away. <laughs> because when the sea comes from one direction, it eddies one way. When it comes from the other direction, it is the other, other way. way. So it's just the middle of it that disappears, and we've lost about 25 feet. That wheat middle tree there was planted 25 feet from the sea because yeah. it was planted by the boys' brigade. So we have some things going on, but again, we know th- th- what we want to do is is, is is get the community out and, and interacting with each other and, okay. and, and enjoying life. Okay, Mr. Miller, I want to thank you very much for uh, so being on the show this morning. Folks, I want to thank you for loving Radio Cayman and Bank Extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I also want to remind you that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. I say to you, have a great day. Continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman. Join Sterling, Dwayne E. Banks at 12.15 for talk today. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. Cayman Pharmacy Group, with a location in West Bay and professional pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling 949-4977 or visit seaboardmarine.com for competitive rates. Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. Fidelity Bank. For all your banking needs, visit fidelitygroup.com. Fidelity. We're good for you. And Roper's Janitorial. Complete janitorial service for commercial, industrial, and residential. They get the job done right every time. Today's biggest news. 